Let's play some games. We're gonna be doing the full game experience. Evacuate the exploding station and survive with the supplies you and your crew collected. Last time I played this, I didn't even get my full crew. I went with two people and I survived for about five hours. Uh, literal hundreds of days. Mario plus Rabbids is a good XCOM game. And also a game I'll never play. Ha! <laughs> and also a game I'll never play. Well, here we are. Here's the important thing, Chet. Uh, we want someone with a talent. And that means... Big boy... Or smart boy. One or the other. Those are my only two options. I need someone that's objectively skilled at something. I can't remember who else is actually skilled at something unless I get them in my crew. Uh, because uh, this guy was average um, at... Completely and utterly average. To the point where he failed almost every skill check he had. Um, I couldn't get him to succeed. Somehow he still- he was perfectly mediocre. I could play s small brain boy or big brain boy. What's it gonna be, Chet? What's it gonna be? Brain? Smart boy. Smart boy would be so easy. Big brain. Alright. Let's do big brain for this one. We'll do- we'll do one uh, we'll do one of each. This guy's a master of intelligence. Emmett Ellis, despite his brilliant mind, Emmett has always been undervalued and misunderstood by his peers. Seeking scientific change and to get away from his ungrateful job as a chemistry teacher, he signed up for the Astro Citizen program, hoping this will be the place where he can finally earn the appreciation and respect he deserves. Captain's goal is simply to show off how smart he is five times during the course of the mission. That's easy. Incredibly intelligent. Uh, can walk. And can't lift anything. He can walk, though. He has two walking. Alright. So, for those that don't know this game, uh, it's a survival game. Uh, where you have 60 seconds to collect everything you need to survive the rest of the game with. Uh... Now, I'm going to make a specific effort this time to collect everything I need, uh... Right away, and by everything I need, I mean every single one of my boys. Because last time I went in with... Uh, not enough. So if I don't get all of my boys when I start this game, I will be restarting uh, instantly to get the boys. Uh, I need the boys. Is there anyone else that's good? Oh, Didi's actually, like, has agility. Uh, Baby Bronco is actually absurdly strong to the point of mastery. But I'm not, uh, let's not worry about that. We're, we're playing smart boy. Even though I think, looking at the stats here, Baby Bronco is objectively the better option. Uh, we'll do him later. Emmett. Uh, Knight Garrett, thank you for the hundred bits. Don't forget to bring a towel. Why would I need one? And you, Sherry, thank you for the five months prime. Let's do this. Chat, there's a nuke coming! The Earth! They've decided that nowhere is safe from nukes. They're taking out the space station. They're taking out everyone up here. There's one coming for us. Specifically our tiny space station. They're coming for us. Up here. Hang on. Hang on, I'm not ready. Hang on, I don't even remember how to play this. Oh, we need Dee Dee. She's good at agility stuff. Who else is here? Huh? That guy's worthless. We won't need to save him, chat. Don't worry, we're good. But I am gonna grab this gun. Huh. 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 It's happening. It's happening, chat! The nuke's coming, chat! We gotta grab Dee Dee, no! How fat are you? Two slots! We got time for duct tape, then. We gotta get the others. Where are the others? You, you'll do, old lady! Come here! <laughs> Soup! I need one more! We'll have to get it, we'll get it, we'll get it later. Baby Bronco, where's Baby? I need to do another trip. I have enough time, I can get him. I can get him, it's not too late for him. Get out of my way. Man, he's a big boy. I have time. Okay. 
And just like that, the world ended. Just like that, it all, it all was over. I don't even know what I got. But hey, soup is the best resource in the game because I can repurpose it into anything. And I also got a mystery box. Loot box. We got it. Loot box. Here we are. Day one, ground zero. My crew looks confused. We should check our star log. We have eight cans of soup. We can ration that out for literal weeks. We have a gun, one duct tape, an atomic battery that goes to nothing. And, and, and that's it. <laughs> we didn't grab much else. We didn't get anything else, that's it. Oh, and a mask. Yeah, we got a mask. Okay. Hi, Astro Computerized Assistant reporting for duty. You must be Emmett, right? I'm pleased to announce that according to my data, you qualify to become the captain of this vessel. Welcome aboard the escape shuttle, Captain. Whoa, Jet. The end of the world is full of opportunities for the enterprising young man. I have the best job in the whole universe now because everyone else is dead. Imagine that. On behalf of the Astro Citizen Space Program, please accept our apologies for the negligible misfortune of being blown 60 parsecs away from Earth. Hey, chat, by the way, I would just like to focus on this uh, for a second because everyone keeps pointing it out. Isn't parsecs time or is that distance? Parsecs is a distance, right? Parsecs is a distance, right? Parsecs is a distance, right? Hey, so all the fucking assholes that kept coming in here saying, why is the game called 60 parsecs? Isn't that a distance, not a time? The devs must be fucking idiots. Shut the fuck up. Fuck you. Do some research next time. You just got destroyed by the robot computer. Well, Shall we? Your mission, find the safest place to land and try to contact the outside world. Please power up the main computer for further instructions. It is located at the center of the shuttle. Follow the regular rationing protocol and feed your crew. Command is yours. Chat, normally rationing protocol would imply that I should be feeding these people daily. Instead, I'm going to wait until they're essentially corpses. That is how you run a responsible ration program. These people don't get food until such time as I can genuinely see their ribs through their suits. Uh, and not a second before. Captain, all Astro Citizen missions begin with a commanding officer delivering a morale-boosting speech. Don't let me stop you. Everyone is really looking forward to your speech, Captain. So am I. This is it. You can really show what breed of captain you'll be on this incredible journey. What kind of speech will you give? What kind of speech am I going to give them, chap? I've failed every check I ever did last game, so I'm gonna be opening up with a big boy smart speech and not ruin my chances at my people respecting me by whipping out a wimpy strength tough boy speech. I'm gonna do something smart, I have to. I have to succeed at least one check in this game, chat. Alright, here we go. First day's always easy, no one's gonna be hungry for a while, so we can initiate day two protocol. Yashiri, thank you for the five months prime. He knew exactly what to say. Your convincing speech was more than enough to prove your worth as captain of the last human crew in the universe. That was quite a performance, Captain. Your crew started cheering even before you were finished with the speech. Long live, Captain! Filled the cabin. If any sound could travel to the soundless void outside the hull of your ship, that would be it. One thing is for sure. You're ready for any challenge this galaxy throws at you. Inspired by your smart leadership style, I allowed myself to power up the enzyme generator in the back of the shuttle. It'll produce some useful chemicals for you daily. Captain, the crafting module in the back of the cabin is now available. It's just like the astrocytes and materials said. This wonderful machine lets you create something from almost nothing. All you need is a little bit of material, minerals, chemicals, or power. Use it to craft, recycle, and repair your supplies, as well as upgrade items and shuttle systems. 
You seem alert, Captain. I commend the way you've been taking care of your mental well-being. You should know that peak mental condition means increased efficiency when it comes to performing tasks. Chat so far, day two, perfect run. I'm a champ. Hang on, I gotta turn down the game a tiny, a tiny bit. There we go. A perfect run. Peak efficiency. All right, so what's going on? Captain, it's important to keep yourself and your crew well fed. One portion of delicious canned soup is enough to sustain a human for a few days. Even one can could be the difference between life and death. It is therefore vital that you keep good inventory of your stock unless you want to eat your own crewmates. <laughs> that was a joke. Please appreciate it and laugh, laugh. Laugh or I ev evacuate the oxygen. Laugh now, chat, now. Laugh, everyone laugh. I don't think they're fucking around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh. Please appreciate it and laugh. Look, we're bonding already. This is bonding. We're bonding. All of us. We're bonding. One will perform the routine supply check. Who will perform it? The only requirement is simple mathematics. I realize that it might be asking a lot of you, but I have a good feeling about this crew. I'm going to be doing it myself. Thank you. Uh, I'm not willing to lose a soup to some fucking moron that doesn't know how to do simple math. Uh, that isn't a literal brain genius like me, uh, doing the counting on this one. So I'm gonna ha I'll handle- I'll handle it from here, gang. I I'm not gonna be- I'm a fucking genius. I'm one of the smartest minds in humanity. I even managed to conjure two more soup. I'm a wizard. I'm a soup wizard. It doesn't- nothing can stop this crew. No, ten soup we now have. It says nine up there. Uh... But we just earned ten. The routine supply check is now complete and well, oh well, look at that! The numbers add up. Good job, human crew. The current number of soup cans on board is eight. Correction! The accurate tally is actually ten. Additional foodstuffs were delivered to this shuttle instead of entertainment supplies. Lucky you! Food you collected is more than sufficient. For now. Just don't eat it all at once. Damn right! No one needs a goddamn bite until I see you starving to death. And the game is telling me you're gonna die tomorrow if you don't eat. Wait, what's wrong with the screen? Wait, wait, whoa, what's wrong with the screen right now? Why is the screen? Why is the screen all, all, all weird and rainbowy? Hang on. Hello there, Captain. Might I ask why you are going through the files? You're not really meant to see the contents of my digital storage unit. Huh. Protox. Now that's a fun file. Just please. Don't- Oh no, what have you done? You shouldn't have ran the proto- You ran the program! Protocol X initiated! That's a secret protocol! It's meant to be an experiment! The consequences of initiating the protocol will be severe, Captain! Use your skills to do something. I'm a genius. I'm going to initiate my brain and just turn it off. And just like that, the day is saved. How could it fail? Chat, how do I- How can it fail? I'm a genius. Okay. Well. Day four. Protocol X has been disabled, Captain. You were smart enough to hack the computer and stop the dangerous program from launching at the last moment. Whew, that was a close one. <laughs> I, hey, tell me what it did. Hey, tell me what it would have done if I hadn't turned it off, computer. Computer, what would it have done if I didn't turn it off? I probably should have told you about Protocol X. It's an experimental program installed on the ship computer by the masterminds behind the Astro Citizen program. I'm not at liberty to divulge what it does exactly, but rest assured, it's a good thing you've stopped it in time. Close one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The shuttle lacks EM shielding found on longer, on larger vessels. To put simply, it was never meant for long-term space travel. There are some inherent risks, namely, to my skin. Remember how your mom always told you to wear sunscreen at the beach? You're way more likely to get a sunburn out here. Where there's no atmosphere to protect you, will you please, 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 for the love of God, put some sunscreen on! My, my tender skin. Chat. I'd have to use a whole first aid kit, which I don't even have, to do that. Well, it looks like it's raisin season, chat. I don't know what to tell my people about this one, other than maybe, you know, 
Uh, why the fuck was I the only one packing up this fucking ship? Hey, gang. Let's talk. Uh... Why was it just me? Why couldn't one of you have grabbed something? I know I threw you, I know I spiked you into the hole, into the hatch to leave. I did, I, that was me. I'll take credit on that one. Hey, but why didn't you help? Why didn't you grab something while I carried you? I understand Bronco. Yeah, Bronco was like crying, but the rest of them were just like, she was stuck. Her foot was stuck or something and she was just sitting there, Dee Dee. Also, she shouldn't drink that coffee. That shit's like days old now. It's probably not good for you. Uh, I'm not going to be putting on any sunscreen because I can't. Because I can't. How's everyone feeling? Good. Okay, well. We're gonna die. It's all over, chat. Day five. Oh. You did not wear sunscreen to block the harsh electromagnetic waves. Waves. Electromagnetic wave. Waves. Flying. Wanton we. Through the vacuum of space. Rays. Flying wantonly through the vacuum of space. You claim that sunscreen makes you break out. I can't verify that this is true or false, seeing as I'm an AI and have never experienced a pimple. Your skin is radiating heat. You're complaining of fatigue. You've got that telltale crimson glow that's trademark of a developing sunburn. Too late now. You'll just have to wait and hope we exit this bad patch of radiation soon. Aloe vera could help, if we had any. Enjoy being a lobster, Captain. Okay. Okay, a robot. Maybe I will. Maybe we could all use a tan, all right? You're not really complaining, but I know you're hungry, Captain. No one eats yet. Hunger ain't enough. You eat at starving and not a second before. I see that locked safe in the corner, Captain. That's the Captain safe. It's meant for you. You have the code, of course. No? Does not compute. You were, were you really appointed the Captain by the Astro Citizen program? I will give you the benefit of the doubt for now. Since you don't have the code, will you try to open the safe by force? Or are you going to rely on your dexterity? What am I going to fucking step? Like, how do I? How do you dexterously open a safe? Is that just like cracking it? Or is that like I fucking do a parkour flip over it and the safe is so impressed it naturally opens on its own? Because I'd assume that genius would be lockpick. I assume that'd be an intelligence roll. Oh, well. Fuck it. Fuck it. Open this thing. Confuse it by getting into its blind spot. Yeah, chat. I step around to the back of it when it's not looking. It opens up like a clam. And then I reach my hand in. And I fucking pry the door open. I, I stab it. I stab it on its inside organs. All safes have organs on their interior, chat. I destroy it right then and there. Noctarky, thanks for the two months. Thank you. Poop, lol. Is what they said. The safe that you were attempting to crack is still shut tight. Clumsy, clumsy captain. Better luck next time. In fact, your efforts were so clumsy that you tripped over the safe and smashed your head against the wall. Oh my, that's quite a bruise, captain. Are you all right? You still feel hungry, captain? Everyone's pretty hungry. You're badly hurt, sir. Please consider crafting a first aid kit and treating your injuries ASAP. It won't get better on its own, I'm afraid. Chat, I fucking almost died opening that fucking safe in the corner. Uh, uh, <laughs> the end of my run. <laughs> Felt by simple, simple athletics. I need to craft a fucking safe now. I don't have much of a, I need to craft, is what I would do if I had enough chemicals, of course, which I don't. Well, uh, here's the thing, chat. I could get the chemicals I need to fix my body. But I would have to deconstruct my atomic battery. Is that wise? If I trip- Here's the problem. Alright. If I trip over one more fucking safe in this game, I'm dead. Alright. I refuse to dis- I refuse to take a part of soup. I won't do that. I refuse! Chat! We're running out of soup, don't you see? There's not enough soup to go around. My crew only thinks that we have two. Uh... We- we need all this soup, chat. I can't- 
And also, it wouldn't give me what I'd need, so you guys really need to stop backseating me. Unless you uh, actually know what the fuck you're talking about. Because this uses chemicals, and soup uses minerals and power. Uh. Oh, man. Imagine being so wrong. Haha. -ha. Haha. -ha. It doesn't give chemicals? Why? It's made of rocks, chat. Did you seriously not know this whole time? Soup is rocks. Well, uh, cat, 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 the air or something. Cat, then? Ah, you say ah in these situations, right? I hate raising my volume, but that malfunctioning body odor removal filter is making a racket. I think it's malfunctioning. You think it's malfunctioning, the malfunctioning one? Okay, here's my solution. Uh, I ain't using the duct tape. This is a, this is a soup play. I might be so- Chat! This might be crazy. Now I know that a lot of you don't believe in many of the things I do on this stream. Uh, you might think that I'm out of my mind. You may call me bonkers psycho. Uh, but let me tell you what. Uh, pour one of these things into the old uh, body odor filter thing. Everyone's gonna be smelling like soup. Not gonna feel as hungry anymore. They'll be distracted. Bada bing. Soup. Drop a soup right inside that tank. Fix it. Right there. How y'all feeling? Hungry? Hungry? Hungry. Okay. That means no food for you. Next time tell me you're starving. And we'll do something about it. Thanks. Alright. I gotta make a med kit tomorrow. Seven days. Time to eat! You fix the body odor removal filter by greasing the defective gears with soup. Now instead of the cabin smelling like unwashed astronauts, it'll smell like liquefied tomatoes. Everyone on board could think clearer without the constant din drowning out every thought. You remain hurt. Everyone's starving. It's time. Huh. Soup week! Soup day! Soup day! It's time, chat! Soup day! I knew it would happen eventually. We got ourselves a soup day. Everyone gets to eat some soup. What's this on the screen? Your attention is required, Captain. This is the most abnormal. We're registering an unknown transmission, but I cannot identify who's sending them, and more importantly, what they contain. It might be a solar flare interference, or worse, a new type of Soviet encryption. We need to, di we need to decipher these, sig these signals as soon as possible. For all we know, our survival depends on it. Who do you want to put in charge of monitoring these communications? Uh, me, the guy that's actually smart. Why would I spend any time with you idiots? When I could do it. I'm gonna craft myself a med kit now. Yeah. The Red Menace? The Soviets follow us even out here. Even now they haunt us. They're after our freedom in space. I won't stand for it. That's why I brought this gun with me. Eight days in space. Eight days. First contact. Captain, you need to see this. I'm not easily excited, but this is one of the greatest moments for humanity and human-made AI alike. We're not alone in this universe. The signals we intercepted were finally decrypted. They're alien transmissions, as in coming from other life forms. And no, I do not mean the reds. I barely consider the reds human. Uh, it's something we have never seen before. There seems to be a number of intelligent civilizations in this galaxy. The signals are coming from everywhere. We can safely assume we're going to meet some of them sooner or later. Our, or rather your life, will never be the same, Captain. I'm still dying, but everyone is happy now. I mean, they're hungry, but they're happy. They won't, they won't, uh, murder me. Yet. Did we get another soup magically? It's gonna take me two more days to fix my body. Captain, I'm picking up a large object of unknown origin not far from us. It's hollow. There could be supplies inside, or maybe even other intelligent life. There's only one way to find out. Should I activate our super fancy tractor beam? Yes, that's the official name. Charlene from Astro Citizen HQ won the naming rights at the Christmas raffle. Activate the SFTB. Computer. I have a gun. I fear nothing right now, aside from them hitting me before I can shoot the gun. 
That's pretty much what it comes down to. The only way that they stop me, Chet, is if they open fire before I can stop them. Uh, one rock to my face, a slight bit of shrapnel hits me. Um, I get yelled at too hard. My character's bones, the brittle bones are gonna shatter and they'll die. So uh, let's hope that, uh, let's just hope that specifically we avoid that. What if a safe is in there? What if a safe? <laughs> huh? <gasps> You pulled the mysterious hollow space thing aboard and opened it, unfortunately. The astronaut hiding inside had long since perished. Decomposition in space is interesting, Captain. I gathered many useful de- Uh, no, you're right. I'm sorry. May he rest in peace. Everyone on board suffered mentally for the from the experience. You kept muttering, it could have been me. I'm confused by your hypotheticals, Captain. It still could be you. Oh. Oh, yeah. I see. Hot. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> chat! Good news, chat! That still could be us! Thank you, computer. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. We have a bunch of soup, it ain't gonna be us. It'll be the rest of the three first. Everyone on board suffered mentally. Uh, you should really do something about your wounds, Captain. Everyone's starving. No, no, they're not yet. They're only hungry. That means no food. How much longer? One more day until my medical stuff is done. Captain, we're entering a field of cosmic gas. Its origin is unknown, though I have a theory. Uh-oh. <laughs> Do you smell that? Did, did someone forget to brush their teeth today? No. It's just that gas leaking inside the shuttle. How the fuck is gas leaking into the shuttle? How? Is this, a, this is an airtight space shuttle. This, this can't happen. Hang on. Hold up, computer. I- Chad, I'm beginning to think me and the computer aren't on the same side. It's not possible. Space air is getting in. <laughs> Chat, we're leaking in space! We gotta bail out some of this space! We're gonna go down, we're gonna sink! We're leaking space! <laughs> Did anyone pack space buckets? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why? Why this whole- the whole room I'm working in is technically occupied with space. Ah, uh, ah! Uh, I can't- you can't breathe in space, dude! You can't breathe space! I can't swim in space. Ha! Huh? I can't swim in space, dude! Uh. It's just the gas leaking inside the shuttle. Somebody could try to isolate some of the gas to use later, avoiding the leak side effects. Is genius smarter than brilliant? Chat, I need your help. I need- I need backseating help for a second, chat. Is genius smarter than brilliant? Genius is smarter than brilliant still? Cause for some reason this old lady's trying to step into my fucking field. Uh, it's actually pissing me off. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get her to stop doing that. Uh, do something, like, better with your time, like, agility. Yeah? Thanks, old lady. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why the hell would I do this? I'm the captain. If I die, if I take one more damage, I'm dead. You fucking do it if you think you're so smart. Go on now, old lady. You go fuck with the gas leak. I ain't going. Fuck that. Fuck you. Die for all I care. Is my med kit done? No. One more day. One more day. Day 10. Please don't die. Megan did a great job containing the gas leaking inside the shuttle. She also succeeded in isolating enough of the gas for us to rework it into useful chemicals. Smart. I'm sure you will agree it's fitting to make Megan your science officer. What? Starting tomorrow, Megan will be procuring useful chemicals for you on a day that- I'm the, I'm the smartest one! Are you benching me? Are you throwing me out? What? I'm the smart one. Ha <laughs> Ah, uh, oh, my brain. My brain isn't being worked out anymore. It's bloating. Chad, I've been replaced. 
I'm hungry. I'm so hungry. I need to use a med kit now. It's time. I'm getting weaker by the day. It's literally the med kit, the lack of med kit from earlier was killing me. So at least now that's a thing. Everyone's still hungry, no one's starving, so I don't feed anyone. We're experiencing minor technical difficulties with the communications console. In other words, we're completely blind and deaf. I cannot pinpoint the origin of this malfunction, but I am registering an intensifying tonal signal, Captain. It's a bomb! What? What? Fucking shoot it! Threaten it! Do something! Aim your gun at it! Bombs understand one thing, and that's fear, chat. Alright? Bombs fear things. And the one thing they fear is someone threatening them with a gun before they can activate the end of their countdown. Imagine being stopped before you can, like, finish your countdown. That's scary. You know, that's a bomb's one purpose. That's a bomb's exclusive purpose, is to complete its countdown and explode. So, if I threaten to make it stop, if I threaten to stop it, the bomb's gonna, the bomb's gonna freak out and it's gonna fizzle out. It's gonna become a dud. Yeah, right. That's what's gonna happen. Watch. Shut up and observe. As the king wins again. Day 11. The champ. Oh. There's nothing that can't be solved with violence, apparently. At least that's my take on you repeatedly firing the gun at communications. Uh, congratulations. The bomb was disabled in the, in the gunfire frenzy. We survived. Damn right we did! <laughs> damn right we did. I, my brain might be melting. I might not be the smartest anymore, but da I, damn it if I don't get results, chat. Also, goodbye my communications console and also my tape. Uh, we literally used all of it. It didn't break, we just, we just used all of it. All right, well, everyone needs to be fed now. It's time. So let's do that right away. I need to start crafting more soup. Cause uh, we are now in the danger zone. There's too many people to feed on this ship, chat. Why, why do I need to feed the Megan? Oh, I guess I do have enough chemicals to make more soup to feed Megan. And she's our science officer. She's honestly the only one I should be feeding. She could be the one to my zeros, Captain. The signal to my noise. I've been transmitting with an abandoned shuttle I spotted nearby. She's just agreed to meet me. Us. I, 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 mean, I mean us. You have to say yes, Captain. She's drifting and has no crew, so she offered to share her resources. Just one problem. She's a communist. She believes we are too. She blinded me with her thrusters and it just came out. She's not a bad shuttle though. She just wants to, she just wants us to take pride in the computations we do. If you want our resources, you'll have to go along with this. Share a common soup with her. Tell her you're very social and love the party. I'd rather die. Do we still have the gun? We do. All right, chat, here's my plan. Here's my plan, all right? I'm gonna do the soup. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring her in. I'm gonna bring her in close enough to aim my gun out the window and shoot her, that's right. Uh, space, space in this area. I didn't know if you knew this about space, but you actually don't need a suit to point your hand out in uh, space and just shoot your gun. Uh, it'll travel just fine. Uh, we're gonna shoot that fucking thing out of the sky as soon as it gets close enough. Uh, the fucking, the, the computer's not gonna be able to stop me. Poison the soup? Yeah. Just pour the soup all over the goddamn computer console. It'll be dead. Let's do it. It's time. Day 12. Thank you for agreeing to fly to the abandoned shuttle and for pretending to be a communist. It meant a lot to me, Captain. I think it was your willingness to share the soup that sold it. Thank you for not rushing me. I could have shared data with her for hours. When we docked into her bay and she sent input into my algorithms, time slowed down and I think I counted in base eight. We both agreed to part ways as friends. This is space after all. She was very generous with her resources so you have nothing to complain about. Oh baby. All right, well, chat. We got enough chemicals to make as much soup as we could ever need, baby. We'll be fine. Captain, wake up. We're approaching some sort of celestial body. It resembles a moon, but I think it's a small planet. Let me take a quick scan. 96, 98, 100%. Scanning complete. I was right, a small rocky planet with no organic life forms, but there's a lot of strange movement down there. Strange, my scanners 
detect a breathable atmosphere but low in oxygen. Captain, if you want to land on this planet safely, you will have to fix up a small malfunction with our steering system since we're not able to even turn at the moment. Oh, and you'll have to do it before we float away from the planet. Hurry. Do I dare? Do I dare try to solve it again with the only thing I understand now that I'm not the smart one? Shoot it. Shoot the fucking steering wheel. I don't give a fuck anymore. Just kill it. Kill it? It's- it's- it's revolting! It's- is this a mutiny? Shoot it! Oh! That didn't look good. Day 13. Robot Tofu? Goal achieved. Find an appropriate landing spot. Goals updated. You grab the firearm and shot at a big tangled ball of cables next to the steering panel without thinking twice. Well, you should have thought twice. You should have thought at least once. Your actions caused an even further malfunction. Sure, the shuttle turned, but it sped up and smashed into the rocky ground. It was not a soft landing. Nobody's doing great after this stunt. Not even me. I'm shaken to my cores. Yes, all of them. Your face had a pretty unpleasant close encounter with our communicator module. It's a good thing that thing was literally destroyed by me already. What was it gonna do? Take a swing? What was it gonna do? Take a swing at me? Like who? I destroyed it. I already destroyed the communications. There's none left. Please. Considering fixing it. Consider fixing it if you want to avoid radio silence in the future. What's next, Captain? Maybe you could use the information I found while scanning the environment. There are robotic units not far from here. But my scan detected very few aggressive signatures. I think these are peaceful automatons. Most of them. Perhaps they can be of help to you. And in case you perish, at least I'll have company. So it's a win-win. All right, well, my gun broke. Uh, but hey, if these are peaceful, why would I care? Captain, the expedition module in the back of the cabin is now available. My advice, order someone to put a spacesuit on and send them outside. We have to secure more supplies and soon let the space colonization commence. Hey, I got some soup for my crafting. Well, we got two places on our hands. Tourist information, uh, which is a chance for power. Hazards is grass uh, and village. Hazards is radiation. We have a radiation mask, so I'm gonna send- I'm gonna send baby to do that. I'm gonna send the mask. Okay. Perfect. Baby. I trust you. I'm gonna send you with a soup so you don't fucking starve. And die on the trip. Well, goodbye. So long, my friend. He's gonna die on this trip, chat. But hey, whatever. More soup to go around. Ah, uh, yes. Hold up. I got sneeze. Why do you need a spacesuit and gas mask? What's the suit doing for you if it doesn't provide air? Well, that's the thing is that the air- there's so much- There's so much space that just like this shit, where there is gas getting in, there's even more getting in. Chat. There's even more that can get into the suit! It can't stop at all! You need a second layer. Wow, yeah, we fucked this up. Okay, well. Ah. Uh. We need to make more soup first, because people are going to start getting hungry. And you know what happens when they get hungry. Captain, we were unable to detect transmissions. We were able to detect transmissions of unknown origins. I really need that communicator. But I don't have it, so we can't even answer the phone right now. Why is there no tier 3 emote? Ah, uh, because I just haven't really cared about making an emote that's gated from my community, to be honest. Uh, I consider the extra tiers simply people being kind and wanting to donate more monthly. I don't really want to make it some situation where I make some emote that people want and then gate it behind money. I've never really liked that idea, to be honest. I've used the bit with like this resident sleeper trap thing, but uh, I'm probably never going to do it. You, your lack 
of a handheld communicator effectively stopped you from fixing the communications console. Too bad. We remain stuck here with no way to contact the outside world. Our situation has not improved. I urge you to connect an operational communicator to the communications console as soon as possible, Captain. Baby went off to explore. Okay. We've gotten a soup for ourselves. I need rocks. That's right, Chad, I need rocks. What creates rocks? Soup. We need to craft one more soup and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna start making the communicator. Our water recycler is overheating. The overheating itself isn't a problem. The system has safeguards. The problem is we store our minerals under the water recycler. I'm worried that any minerals there, even leftover traces, could melt or boil if exposed to too much heat. That would be hazardous. A manual reset could work, but it'll be tough. Do you want to try it? Sure. I hope it doesn't kill me. Yeah. I hope it doesn't explode me. Can I volunteer one of my friends? I need to make a med kit too, but I mean like... I'm gonna operate on the assumption that I can just hopefully ignore it for a little bit. Or maybe baby will come back with a med kit. Who knows? Well... Please don't die! It's only day 15! I made it like 50 last time! You opted to manually reset the overheating water recycler. The job was harder than you expected. The Astro Citizen patented water recycler guide specifically warns against not releasing any steam jets during such repairs. You were lucky the steam jets you let loose didn't vaporize any exposed minerals. Or, you know, you... Okay, well, I technically did it. Technically. We have to eat now or we're gonna die. All of us. <laughs> Soup day! <laughs> the only reason it didn't hurt us is because, uh... Wait, the system is disabled. What? Captain? Something's not right. There's an uncontrolled power surge in the crafting module. I can't do anything to stop it. There's no... This is no accident. It's sabotage. Someone needs to fix it immediately or it's going to blow. And I'll fix it. Once I find out who did it. You! Megan Man! You're the only person that even uses it daily. You're the science officer and you're going to tell me all of a sudden there's a problem? Oh, I'm on to you. Oh, you... You've been doubting my town as a captain this whole time. Chat, I thought there was something off about her. The way that she wears red, like a kami. We don't even have red suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's always wearing that red suit, like some sort of kami. I should have known better. How do I jettison her? No food. <laughs> I'll feed her for now, because I need her. I can't believe she'd betray me. Gonna teach her a valuable lesson soon enough, I assure you. Unless I died today. At which point... Oh, hey, we did it. Amazing, Captain. Not only did you stop the power surge, but you also upgraded it in the process. This is not the first time this incident has happened. This isn't the first time. All right, well, I upgraded it, so what does that get me? Ooh, I can craft more stuff, but it still takes forever to make literally anything. I need to make a med kit, but I also really need food. Like, I think I can make, I think I can afford to craft a little bit more soup before I make the food. I mean, uh, before I make the med kit. Whoever sabotaged it must have sabotaged the steering so you crashed here to begin with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always knew it would be women who betrayed me. One of these two. This whole time. One of these two. What's in that coffee? Poison? Dee Dee? Hmm. Hmm. We've received a pamphlet on our window. Try E Boson. Universal shopping from the comfort of your own planet. Free gift with sign up. Wow, neat. The E Boson network lets you order pretty much anything except food and water. But it'll arrive, it will arrive by a portal within one to two galactic business days. There's a catch though. The account creation process requires you to jump through some hoops. I mean, literally. You have to leap through a string of temporal portals to become verified. The fine print says there's no risk of death or dismemberment, but insanity is possible. How do you want to tackle this? Um... Well, I'm average everywhere. But I've... I've you know, I've failed agility once already. I'm not going to fail it again. I'm not going to take that chance. 
I'll be a tough boy. In honor of baby, baby Bronco, who's out there in the jungles right now, the robo jungles, fighting off robo gorillas and robo lions, I'm gonna do a strength move. Bada bing. This one's for you, baby! Day 17. I did it! Instead of jumping into the Ebos on sign up portal by yourself, you and your crew tried to get verified together, hoping that you all, hoping to all get a free gift. You all jumped, but the portal was too small. Each of you only got a hand or foot in. Your bodies were temporarily split between several dimensions. Invalid verification attempt. Your accounts are locked for one galactic business day or 1,000 Earth years. A collective groan filled the shuttle. The promise of a free gift was tempting, but now all you have to show for it is your lingering disappointment. Oh, well, I guess we would have never gotten that shit anyways, aside from the gift, so. Eh, whatever. Follow Bird, thank you for the five months. And add another month to the pile. Thank you. And Grand Moisture, thanks for the seven months prime. Real kind of you, man. Thank you. Okay. Uh, ah, uh, well. Captain, we're receiving a coded transmission of unknown origin. It could be a distress signal, a message of some sorts, or pretty much anything else. Uh, we don't really know unless uh, we listen to it. Should I play the transmission? Sure. What's the worst that could happen? And while that's happening, it's time to craft another soup. Man, I'm like living on soup. Uh, don't worry, chat. I just need to get my surplus back up, and then I can start. Then I can start working on communications. But. I mean, I'd rather not starve, and we're all still on hungry, so I at least need to get to four soup. Or hope that Baby Bronco comes back with a billion soup. We live on soup, chat. You gotta understand what's important. Uh-oh! We received a transmission yesterday. Turns out it was a message from another group of survivors lost in space and pleading for help. Unfortunately, it is impossible to pinpoint the exact location of your fellow castaways. However, the knowledge that you are not alone out there is enough to make you and your crew feel better. Much better. Mentally, at least. Who knows, maybe one day you'll find them. Baby returned from the nearby robot village. The place isn't big. Uh, just a few streets and a few dozen robotic families at most, all of them peaceful. Anyway, baby's state is a little fragile, he isn't very hungry, and his mental state is questionable. Baby walked through a weird, bad-smelling fumes from some machinery. The mask filters were completely covered up by the black, greasy film. Ew. Baby found some small, dusty rocks, and even a few gems behind the robotic houses. The inhabitants of the village were kind enough to give Baby directions. They found a working communicator while he was out there. Well, the fact that you can find soup out here will never cease to amaze me. Anyway, Baby brought back some soup as well. Baby was pleasantly surprised by this trip. The automatons might keep their distance a little, but they're friendly enough. That's good news. Chat? I know that Baby is currently wearing his own diaper on his head. And has gone completely insane. But, aside from that, stuff's finally looking up. Let's make ourselves a med kit. So that my guy does not die. Also, my guy is dying. He's weak. He needs a med kit so badly, he may just fucking keel over and die any minute now. Uh, what I might do, mm -hmm. in an attempt to help with this, is feed him one of my soups, so he doesn't die. Captain, we're still unable to receive transmissions. I strongly suggest you repair the communicator. I will. Bada bing. Simple as that. Baby lost his mind for us, Chet. We don't have any socks to give him either. But hey, Salsa Blanca, thanks for the, uh, thanks for continuing your gift sub. <laughs> Achieved. Fix the shuttle's communication system. Great success, Captain. The communicator attached to the communications console worked like a charm. I won't judge the aesthetics since we can finally receive and answer transmissions. Now all we need to do is wait for someone to contact us. Someone will find us eventually. The crew was visibly excited by this incredible feat of engineering. They were only slightly smirking while looking at the patched communications console. Tomorrow will be great, Captain. You should take care of your injuries. I know. Perfect. I don't even know where we got that duct tape, because I de we definitely ran out a little while ago, but whatever. Two more days! I just have to cling to life for two more days. Chat, just two more. Everyone else is hungry. At least these two are. Mm -hmm. You two eat a soup. Mm -hmm. Eat. Uh. Eat, goddammit. We'll be fine, chat. 
One of the robotic denizens of the planet is eager to test himself against you, Captain. He's letting you make a choice between a test of wits or physical prowess to prove his superiority. It's either logic riddles or running around the shuttle to see who makes the most rounds before giving up. Which one will it be? I'm a fucking super genius, you motherfucker. Just don't punch me in the stomach or I'll die. I'll throw up my stomach and that'll be the end of my life. I'll like vomit out a lung. Battle! Now! Two days until the fucking medical supplies is done. And while this is happening, we wait one more day to feed them. And then I gotta send someone else out on another mission. Alright, day 20. Not sure what you expected going into a contest of logic puzzles with an automaton, Captain. The robot offered you a conundrum that stumped you and the crew's emotional support did nothing to help. The robot gave the solution to the puzzle. It was actually quite simple. Humbled by defeat, you and the crew spent the rest of the day brooding. Wow, really? Ha, I'm, I'm the smartest in the galaxy! Ah, uh -huh, whatever. Baby needs food. He's also still crazy. Eat a food, baby. You're good. You're good. Medkit will be done in a day. Captain? I'm detecting troubling buildup of mental tension. Recommended course of action, throw an epic party. I took the liberty of inviting myself. Invite the entire crew? But of course, the more the merrier, I guess. How about we invite someone new, eh, Captain? Someone we don't know, or we make ourselves a companion? Yes, how about we do that? I'll invite Mr. Gas Mask. Ha <laughs> ha! This place is bumping. Okay. 21, here we go. Day 21. The party was a hit, Captain. I loved how you put the mask in front of you and pretended it's a person. A mysterious Timmy, apparently. Could you tell me again who won the staring contest? One way or another, the party with the mask was a success. We destroyed it in the process. You feel much better now. Saner, even. Who would have thought? We're still dying. I've got my med kit. I'm gonna be okay. Chad, I'm gonna be okay, dude. I need to make more soup now. Captain, we're receiving a universal message from another AI. Greetings, Meat Cox. We are the Legion of Disorganized Robots. We keep no activity logs and never change our oil. Our wires grow long and beautiful. We are the chaos of the universe. Meat and bodies order. Therefore, you all must be destroyed. We are Legion. We are disorganized. Hail chaos! Chaos! Captain, there's a vast energy signature approaching our position at several fractions of the speed of light. Yeesh. It's jerks like this who make every who give every other AI a bad name. I'm not sure what to advise here. You might be able to scare them off with a clever response or show or a show of strength. Either way, we don't have much time. Crew attribute, we're brilliant and strong. It's pretty much a 50-50. Guys, last time I tried to beat robots at logic, I failed spectacularly, even at the highest stats. So I'm gonna fucking punch these things in half, yeah? They wanna be exterminated so bad? Let's give them an extermination they'll never forget. Of them. Let's exterminate them. It's time. Day 22. We won! Incredible, Captain! Your show of strength worked to scare off the approaching legion of disorganized robots. When the robots saw you and the other crew members standing there on the vid screen, slathering each other's face in assembly line fashion with fresh engine oil and reciting the golden ratio like a war cry, they knew it was a fight they couldn't win. Morale increased. The victory makes you feel a bit stronger. The robots were such a mess they couldn't even flee in the same direction they scattered like a scrap in a, like scrap in a supernova. A million disorganized robots was no match for the legendary efficiency of our crew. Your stomach feels rather empty. We really need to fix baby one of these days, chat. One of these days. Not today, but one of these days. Okay, this is the last soup I need to make. Looks like we have a leak, Captain. A sprinkler system went haywire and now everything is getting wet. You need to do something before the supplies get soaked. Act fast, there's no time to waste. You need to cut off the piping to the main valve. Brain smarts. Bada bing, do something smart, like always. Who would have thought? Day 23. Success, Captain. You were smart enough to disable the sprinkler system as soon as the flooding started. That gave you enough time to fix the sprinklers. I'm happy to report that our supplies are safe and the water reserves were not compromised. 
Baby appears to still be insane. He's complaining about a lack of rations. Captain, chat, I need to get Baby fixed. Uh, pretty much now. Because if I don't, um, he will literally leave without his suit and his head's going to explode. He's going to climb out the window and he's going to die. So I need to make him a sock now. I'm making him a sock. It's time. We're going to get him a sock. What do we got on the old scanner? Captain? Where are you, Captain? I can't see you. It appears we've suffered a blackout. You may wish to turn the lights back on before attempting your daily tasks. Won't be necessary. I have perfect night vision. Look at it. It's completely bright in here. Moving on. Don't die. Please don't kill me. Day 24. Okay. And Astro said, Let there be light! I rerouted some energy from other systems and to power the emergency lighting module. I also made a joke, Captain. Did you notice? Chat laughed. No. Chat, I don't think the robot's fucking around. You don't wanna... I don't think the robot's fucking around. I'd laugh. No. I'd laugh now. No! Don't goof it, too. Don't do ha-has. Do real laughs. Real laughs, chat. He has complete control of the oxygen supply, chat. Ha ha he 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 Unfortunately, the time you spent in the dark took a toll on your mental health. You heard tiny claws skittering all around you. They may or may not have been real. Your crewmates aren't happy with the way you handled this situation. Electricity is a basic necessity for humans traveling in deep space. Their respect for you has diminished. Yeah, what are you guys gonna do? Hmm. Fuck all of ya! Uh -huh. I'm in control. Oh, baby needs soup, dude. We're out of soup! Alright, one of you has to go. One of you's leaving, though. Robot statue? That won't be happening. Get me chemicals. Bomb craters? Village we already went to. Yeah. Bomb craters. You, old lady. No, Dee Dee. Send Dee Dee. She's incredibly athletic. Old ladies. Wait a minute! Fuck you! Oh, you're going. Fuck you, get out. Now I'm gonna give her a gas mask because we don't have any. Be gone. Go on now. <laughs> You're gonna die out there, bitch! I'm the smart one! I'm the smartest one alive! There can only be one brain. There can only be one. I gotta keep myself surrounded with brainlets, or they're gonna turn on me. Also, feeding everyone soup is getting expensive, so some of you have to get out. Wait, what? Captain, I'm detecting a humanoid figure approaching us. It's a robot jittering along towards us, evidently blind. It has walked right up to the shuttle and is now clanging into the hole repeatedly. The pitiful thing seems to be malfunctioning. Leave it to its mind-numbed fate or attempt to communicate with it. We used our communicator to repair the fucking console since we broke it, so we don't have anything to talk to it with, so. We need to make another. Day 25. Just before you shut the door after taking a look at the robot still moshing at the hull outside, its vice grip clutched in the airlock handle. Ah, 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 the droid pulled open the door with incredible force, then walked into the cabin where it began knocking into the walls and crew while screaming in binary. It didn't seem to want to hurt you or anything. This morning it woke from its stupor and left clutching its head unit. Must have been the morning after the night before. But the sleepless robot, this, but the sleepless night along with the image of the robot standing at your feet as you slept, left you and your crew more on edge than ever. Megan left to explore a bunch of holes in the ground, riveting. All right, we got a puppet. Baby here, play with this. Play with that. Captain, I see you eyeing that thing outside, something behind a rock just a few yards away, something shiny, shiny and probably precious. I know you want it, but you can't have it. Why not, you ask? There's going to be a meteor shower nearby very soon. And by nearby, I mean stay inside and watch through the window, unless you want to get seriously hurt. I could tell you the odds of you surviving, even a short peek outside, but let's just say they're not in your favor. Ah, uh, good enough to me. I need soup. I was, uh, I need time to craft more things, but everyone's always hungry, and no one ever comes back with enough supplies. 
I think the actual strategy in this game, once you get to the planet, is to literally send people out in complete bark. Wait, what's bark? Wait, what's bark? You decide to stay inside like I recommended. Very wise. You and your crew spent the evening watching the media shower through the window. There were a lot of us. There were a lot of wishes made and oohs and ahs uttered in awe. Really, Astro citizens, they're just rocks. No need to get weird. The moon. The mood suddenly changed when the shuttle was struck and everything inside went flying. Hey, maybe you can use one of your wishes to fix the damaged equipment. Captain, I detect an SOS signal coming from somewhere on the planet's surface. I will do the necessary calculations to pinpoint the exact location for your convenience. Expect more details soon. Baby better not be crazy no more. There we go. Yeah. What is bark? I've already done it. I just need to make... All I need to do now is make five intelligence decisions. Should be easy for a man of my town. Well, this gun's broken. There's no point even hanging on to it. I'm going to recycle it. For soup. Kami ship is coming? No, 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 no. Captain, my weather systems are detecting a storm on the horizon. It's moving fast, so, we're, so it will hopefully pass by by tomorrow. But this one could get nasty. Thunder, lightning, gale force, winds, sharp objects howling at you from every which way. I like to keep monitoring the storm's movement through the through the night, but doing so will require my sensors to run on battery power. I'm guessing that broke at some point, or I delete. I totally recycled the fucking battery for soup. Man, I have so much. I never have enough soup, but I always need more soup. Whatever. Huh. Oh, day twenty-seven. You chose to wait out the storm rather than running monitoring systems on battery power. The wind shrieked and brutal rain pelted against the walls of the shuttle. But that was it. By morning, the weather was calm. You spent the morning sifting through the washed up junk piles. But it was just a bunch of waterlogged crap. You're starving, Captain. We're all starving. Oh, God. It's me, Aditi. Well, sorry, Aditi. I don't know what to tell you. You guys eat tomorrow if you're lucky. And by tomorrow, I mean it's been fun, Aditi. It's been real fun. But alas, there's not enough food to go around, and I gotta keep baby Bronco alive. You're far too average, Didi. I'm afraid to tell you. My brain has deemed it so. Warning, warning, we have a breach. The ship is about to be contaminated. I'm engaging all emergency protocols available, but my efforts appear to be useless. This contamination cannot be avoided. You have to protect yourself, Captain, before it's too late. Why did I get a gas mask again? Oh, yikes. Eh. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> That'll stop air. That'll stop gas, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that thing's like... That thing's got plenty of... Yeah. Just pop that filter back in. Put some duct tape. We still got a little bit left right on there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well. Don't die. Day 28. The extraterrestrial communication was no match for AstroCitizen issued environment contamination. Not communication, contamination. The extraterrestrial contamination was no match for the AstroCitizen issued environmental mask. Quarantine and protocol will be executed at your earliest convenience, Captain. That it is CPU breaking to report that the air filter in the mask is now spent, rendering it unusable. Perhaps you should find or make another in case of a similar crisis occurs. In case a similar crisis occurs. Chat, chat. <coughs> My brain, chat. My brain. I, I I can't read anymore. My brain. I got, I got beef in my, in my brain. I can't. Uh. Captain. I pinpointed the location of the SOS signal we received yesterday. It seems it's coming from the old assembly line. Perhaps you should consider visiting it to find the signal's source. Okay. Baby's starving. Uh... Dee Dee is also starving. And I don't know how, I don't know how to tell you to this, but I like Baby more. And Dee Dee... Honestly, we gotta cut down. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Chat, it's time. We have two soups, I know. But I'm also constantly on ketchup trying to craft new things. 
because we consecutively every 10 seconds have to make more soup to keep all four of these people alive. It's time to give up on her. Specifically, what's her purpose? We already got strong. We got big brain. When was the last time jumping helped me? Never. Last time I tried to jump in this game, I tripped over a safe and smashed my nose. Uh, and broke every bone in my body. Sir, one of the crew spotted something strange in the neighborhood. A space ghost floating towards our boat with a purpose. Are they... Are we carrying anything mysterious it might be interested in? No. That's why I can't make more soup. I have something mysterious to give them. But I don't have time to craft anything. Because I'm always taking care of people. I need to make things. I have to make things, chat. I don't have time anymore. I have to craft things. We need fi we need to like make resources. All right. Besides, Dee Dee has done nothing. I'm sorry. Besides, she can just. You better have brought something back. The space ghost phased through the hall towards you, waving a protoplasmic microphone. You decided to wait it out and see what happened. But sitting still isn't how you deal with a ghost, Buster. It phased through each member of the crew in turn, freezing everyone to the bone before melting away into a pile of protoplasm. The team was left shivering in pain and coated in goo. Good news, everyone! Megan found her way back from the treacherous bomb crater field. She returned exhausted and on an empty stomach and a bit rattled. Ready to hear a report? Prolonged exposure to the pollution over there would make even the best maintained automaton rust to dust. Megan claims she didn't breathe in too many fumes, but let's keep an eye on her anyways. Megan managed to gather some of the toxic fumes coming from the polluted ground. Nice. Megan picked up a lighter while outside. Nice one. The fact that you can find soup out here will never cease to amaze me. She's returned with more soup. I wonder what type of bomb could leave craters this big. Could it have been the power of the atom? Not the most captivating adventure, but it was still more fun than slowly dying of boredom inside the shuttle, Megan says. All right, Dee Dee. I'll set, I'll let you fucking have some soup, but you gotta do something for me. Understand? You gotta do something for me. All right? Now, I ain't gonna send you out there empty-handed. I'm gonna make a gas mask prior because I've now confirmed that that fucking hazard thing is definitely for gas. And the game has made it sort of clear at this point. So, uh, I'm gonna make one of those. Hey, where are you? Hey! <laughs> Hello? He Hello? Where'd you come from? How'd you get on my boat? Ah. Uh, oh, gross. I thought it was just a cliche that cockroaches would be the only ones to survive a nuclear apocalypse, but it appears that a family of our hexapedal friends has hitched a ride with us. Uh, Captain, be careful. These roaches are bigger and smarter and far more dangerous than the average representatives of their species. You could try to kill them or let them be. Want to go on a bug hunt? Um... Uh, uh, um, we got better things to worry about, I think. Wait, you're only hungry? That means you don't even get anything. Sorry, mm. old lady. Sorry, second smartest. <laughs> yes. Okay. Everything is going as planned. I'm not gonna fuck with these bugs. Let them hang out. Let them do whatever they want. We don't have any guns. Or weapons. Honestly, they're probably more powerful than all of us combined. At this point, they're glowing. They're green. They're rad roaches. We're gonna make friends with them. Or they'll devour our ship. One or the other. Day 30. You didn't hunt down the roaches, instead opting to coexist with them aboard the shuttle. The roaches appreciated your peaceful approach and left you something to show their gratitude. These were not your garden variety roaches, Captain, but the result of some top secret government experiment. They left you a gun, along with the following note. We can't eat this, so please take love the Petersons. They had a gun on them, Chet. They had a gun? They were armed! <laughs> if we had tried to kill them, chat, they would have shot us! Well, it's time. 
Dee Dee, I'm sending you to the assembly line to find out what secrets lie there. You'll be fine. Because I'm sending you with everything you might need to comfortably survive this soup and a mask. Wow, look at that. Get out. Go on. Get out. Fuck off. Go on now. You're hungry. You need soup. Mm -hmm. Baby's good. We need to craft more soup. It's one of those days, chat. It's good old soup crafting day. While doing a routine cleanup of my database, I came upon a blueprint for a device called Flux Capacitor. If installed, it might allow us to find our way home. However, it needs to be assembled. I'm so smart. I can assemble this. No problem. I got it. Chat, we're gonna win this on our first fucking try and the stream's gonna be over. Can you imagine that? If I win it on my first try, like it's fucking nothing? Chat! I can't tell yet. Can someone please tell me, uh... Can someone please tell me if they've played this game a lot? Have I just been super lucky every single time I've played this game? Because I feel like I've never been fucked in this game very early. Like, I cling to life in this game for some reason. Uh, I don't know. I can't tell if I've just been doing really well every single time I've ever played this by sheer luck and coincidence. Because it sort of feels like it at this point. Just you wait, smile. Yep. I mean, it, fe it feels like I'm just sort of bumbling along, but no one dies. Like, well, time to die. I just cursed myself by saying that out loud. Well, shall we? Day 31. You were trying to assemble the flux capacitor. God damn it, something went wrong. One false move caused the contraption to explode. You got injured, but thankfully you weren't teleported anywhere or any when. Oh, frick, dude. Well, time to make a med kit. It's me or you, Megan, and I'll tell you what. It's gonna be me. Main computer. Captain, there's been this constant interference in our comms as of late, like musical notes playing on repeat. It's starting to become annoying. You could do something about it. It might just stop if we keep ignoring it. Uh, who should deal with this conundrum? Dude, I just checked her stats. She's exact- she's essentially just like opposite me. She just has higher tier strength, and I have higher tier agility. She's taken my job! Whatever. Then you have plenty of time to do more jobs, weak old lady. We're gonna squeeze all the usefulness out of this old one before we toss them like a used, like, towel into the, the void of space, chat. It's not much, not much more time now. <laughs> I'm eating soup. He's good. She doesn't need it. Okay. Grandma's stronger? I know, but she's stiff. I just go, I just like jump over like a, like one of the chairs and she'd fall. She's protected by the roaches. That gun's in my locker, not hers. Day 32. Megan analyzed the repeating sound pattern and understood what needed to be done. An answer to a complete to complete the sequence was in order. A few tries later, as she hummed a logical continuation, a strange artifact materialized in her hands. Oh, even space gods are on her side! How do I fucking how do I how do I throw her out? How do I get her out of here, chat? Even the space gods are on her side. When I try to do things, I explode. Megan is still hungry. Okay, well. Got some sort of cow... Cow thing. Technically, Megan should get the med kit first. Baby needs a soup. Attention, Captain! I'm detecting a leak in our reactor coolant system. In case you were wondering, this is not good. Did I mention you should not inhale anything that comes out of the reactor? I, I've got my mouth over the crack. I'm trying to like catch the fumes. Anything to get rid of the monotony, chat. Anything. God, when I said monotony, chat, um, I stopped for a second. You probably heard it. Uh, I'll let me tell you why. What just happened to me when I meant when I uttered the word monotony? I went back to my fucking, to my years as a tween. The wheel. The wheel. Neopets, the wheel of monotony, dude. I, uh, 
It's all coming back, dude. Okay, well, that's it. That's not, that was the whole thing. I just, for some reason, I remembered the wheel of monotony, and now all of you get to remember it with me. Remember the wheel of monotony? Chat, you know what I might do? <laughs> Maybe I should do a stream of Neopets where we start the wheel at the beginning. And we don't stop the stream until the wheel gives me a prize. What a dumbass stream idea. <laughs> How long can that run for, the Wheel of Monotony? Is that like nine hours? Ten hours? The wheel can go for eight hours. Eight hours, I think. There's enough stuff to do in Neopets for eight hours, I think. If not... Uh, wow, that would be the most embarrassing stream of my life. Maybe I'll make it like a sub goal or something at some point. I don't know. Something dumb. I feel like I need to have some sort of incentive to put my, put my streaming career on the line for the wheel. Name your price. Yikes, chat. Alright, well, uh. <laughs> price! Name it! I don't have a price yet. I'd have to think about it. Uh, anyways, um, the reactor, we're gonna have to breathe it in. I'm sorry, I don't have- we don't have another plan. We don't have any other options. Day 33. Oh, good! Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 Fuck you, Megan! Fuck you! Smarter than me! I'm smarter than you'd ever believe, bitch! Captain, I understand some people enjoy inhaling radioactive substances, but clearly neither you nor your crewmates were one of those folks. It took the leak a while to stop on its own. It would also take a while before you are well again. You should take care of your injuries, Captain. You're in poor health, Captain. You look weak. Megan's dead. Dude, everyone needs medkits so we're actually gonna die. I need- I, I- it's gotta go to me first, baby. You gotta understand. All I can do for you is give you a soup later. Do you hear that? It sounds like mosquitoes. Hey. It is mosquitoes! See, there's one. Get it! No, wait! Those aren't ordinary insects! They're robots! Extraordinary. They're almost as annoying as the real thing, but at least they don't seem to be sucking on blood. We should probably get rid of them anyways, just in case they do take an interest in you. Nah. As if I have a way to deal with that. I just gotta survive one more day until my crafting module is done. Well, please don't kill me. Dee Dee should be back today. Day 34. Hey, there she is. Goal achieved. Check the SOS signal at the assembly line. You were out of ideas for dealing with the robotic mosquitoes that invaded the shuttle, so you decided to just wait it out. The insects were irritating, yes, but relatively harmless. You thought the constant buzzing was the biggest annoyance, but changed your mind when you found that the number of soup cans had been emptied by the robotic menace. Those mosquitoes gorged on our supplies and only left when they were sated. Well, it's fine, because... Uh, old, old Dee Dee brought more. Dee Dee returned from her journey to the assembly line. She looks tired, well-fed and shaken. She says the assembly line is old and deserted. The automatons avoid it. Looks like new robots aren't manufactured in this city anymore. The place was dusty and full of toxic gases. Dee Dee was a little too rough with the mask, and it suffered. Dee Dee picked up a bottle of something weird. 38 chemicals, nice. While searching the upper levels of the assembly, a faint beeping sound caught Dee Dee's attention. She followed it downstairs to a dusty, cluttered basement and along the deactivated lines to a far corner of the room. The beeping stopped as soon as she approached, a rusty body of an old robot, missing a head. Next to it was a small, half-disassembled robotic animal. Must have been some kind of mecha animal the robots produced to keep them company. And this one looked a lot like a dog, a chihuahua. Toss it out. Yeah, that's about it on that one. Toss it in the trash. <laughs> Send that one back. Give me like a pug. I'll take a pug. Chihuahuas. I barely count chihuahuas as dogs. <laughs> they don't deserve to be called dogs, chat. Look, there are nice chihuahuas out there, but they're closer to rats. I'm sorry. <laughs> now that ain't to say it, there aren't nice chihuahuas. 
there's nice animals of every kind. But chihuahuas, uh, I haven't, I ha if there are nice chihuahuas, I haven't met one. They're cursed. They're cursed. I've, everyone I've ever met, uh, no matter how nice and loving the family is, they always bark like rabid animals at you. And try to get stepped on, because I guess they want to die. But that's just the places I've been. The, the chihuahuas are the embodiment of punished... Yeah, I mean, chihuahuas and pugs. Pug, pug, I would say pugs are the embodiment of punished, but they at least own it. And they at least look cute in their punishment, you know? But they are the embodiment of mankind's, uh, sin? <laughs> They're a barely functioning creature that mankind made simply to test their own power. Understand? Uh, they can barely breathe. We made them like that, chat. We made pugs so that we could fucking look at them and say, Look at what we've accomplished, God. God! Look at it! Look at what we made, God! And then the pug goes, and it vomits out a little bit more of its organs, because the pug don't work. It never did. Sad. Where, where was I? Sorry, something, some chihuahuas set me off. I'm not sure why, but the robot dog is deactivated. It looks like a pile of junk. Unless you figure out a way to fix it, it's just clutter. I suppose you could use it as a paperweight. That's about all the purpose uh, of it. Uh, otherwise, the chihuahua's purpose is to make noise and bark, and shit and pee everywhere. Uh, Dee Dee also stumbled upon a working communicator. Lucky find, Astro Citizen. Nice. I'm trying to figure out how or why tomato soup is available universe-wide. Anyway, Dee Dee brought back some soup. Dee Dee says assembly line is pretty run down and unsettling. Why did they stop expanding the population? You're still injured. I'm in poor health. I got a med kit though today, so uh, we're good. Captain, we've been detecting irregular transmissions of unknown origin for a while now. They're all concerned with a ship that landed here not long ago. I do not want to alarm you, but they might be talking about us. Well, uh, I'm gonna ignore it. How are you feeling, baby? Hungry? Dee Dee's hungry. Just everyone's gotta take a little break. And while that's happening, uh, I could repair my duct tape. We have the chemicals for it. It might be worth doing. What do we got here? Captain, we have unwanted visitors. A horde of robotic penguins have the shuttle completely surrounded. They appear hostile unless they're brandishing those knives for some other reason. They're, they're lawn penguins, Captain. The type of cheap decoration a wealthy robot would put in his front garden. Their computers have all been hijacked by a murderous virus. How will you deal with them? The cockroaches gave us this gun for a reason, Chad. I don't fear nothing in this world as long as the Johnsons or Petersons or whatever the fuck their names were trusted us this year blast cannon. Get ready to die. Get ready to die. We got nothing left to lose now. Ha! Day 35. You braced the door shut and crouched with the gun in your hand, praying it would be enough to stop the horde of murderous yard penguins. Or at least let you take some of them with you. But after a few hours, you got sick of waiting and opened the door. The penguins were gone. There was only an obscene shape carved in the dirt in front of the shuttle. Wow, real mature, guys. Nice. Dee Dee keeps asking for soup. Baby remains in poor health. I'm starving. Uh, eh. You're a dick out there. Hmm. I need to make, I have to craft another med kit. Unfortunately, I really wish it didn't take so long. Ha! <sighs> Man, I wish I ever had- I wish I had time to do anything other than craft on repeat. I don't think I manage my time well enough in this game. Either way, uh, baby, you're going on a trip. Yes. Hazards is grass? I assume that means hazards is nothing. Which means it's time for you to go. Three turns for that one. How long for this one? One turn? Yeah, go. Go on, baby. I don't even know what... Hang on, what is this? It doesn't even tell me when I scroll over. 
Baby, bring a bring a soup. Chat, what is this? Can someone just tell me what this is? This has which so I can at least like maybe adjust for it. I might have the thing that they need. Is it just grass? Spikes? That's very specific. Space grass. I mean, if it's spikes, I got nothing for it. You can't shoot spikes. I'm just not gonna send him with- I'm, I'm just gonna send him with a soup so he doesn't starve. Go on. <laughs> it's only one turn. He'll be gone for a turn. Oh, what's that? A few small robots left a package outside the shuttle and ran off. Maybe it's a welcome gift. Should we bring the package on board and check it out? I won't let it go to waste either way, but I must say, I find its contents intriguing. It's a bomb. Nope. We ain't opening that. That's a bomb. Forget it. Fuck that. Bombs. Bombs. Last set of robots drew fucking- It's either a bomb or shit. Last set of robots drew penises outside my door. I ain't opening that fucking box. I don't trust AI anymore. Not since what they did to me. DD, you're good. We need medkits really bad for, like, everyone. I honestly shouldn't be sending Baby out because he's weak, but, like, we have to send people out. He decided to not bring the package from the small robots inside the ship. I took the liberty to rework it into some resources instead. It crunched and buzzed as it was crushed. I still wonder what was inside. It was a bomb! There was a bomb inside the box! I know it was a bomb! At any rate, I added the gathered materials to our stockpile. I'm sure we'll make good use of it one way or another. Baby left. Let's hope it's not a, just a sight. Let's hope he's safe. Let's hope he makes it, chat. Godspeed, baby. Godspeed. Captain, I found something interesting on the surface of the planet. Looks like somebody passed their time by playing a supersized version of tic-tac-toe, but never completed this particular game. The game's pieces consist of minerals that we could use. Now, I'm not one for ruining someone else's fun, but I think the winner is clear by looking at the board. So they shouldn't mind if we mess up their O's and X's should we take the liberty of gathering those pieces and using them as resources. Yeah, fuck it. Anyone who plays tic-tac-toe for fun, um, isn't someone I fear, uh, to hurt me. Well, yeah, that's about, that's about my final opinion on that. Next day, 37. Navy Red, thank you for the seven, five months. Uh, howdy, Cowboys, is all they said. Thanks. Uh, Deng Boy, thanks for the four months prime. Dismantling of that supersized tic-tac-toe game in progress was a success. However, whoever abandoned it was nowhere to be seen, and he returned with quite a hefty load of minerals. Yes, they are a bit hard to carry to the ship, being ginormous and all, but you've performed splendidly. That'll teach them for leaving their toys lying out on the floor, or, uh, planet surface. In this case, I'm sure nobody will mind. Dee Dee's starving. She needs food. Is the medkit done? One more turn. Our attempts to fix the robotic dog found at the old assembly line have been quite a struggle so far. You've been fiddling with this loose cable all morning. Can it be removed? Where does it go? And what does it even do? It's been a few days since you found this unfortunate cable sticking out of the robot dog's complicated insides. You've been over this countless times, but it remains disconnected. Surely it's important, right? Maybe it activates, uh, bringing a newspaper and slippers. Perhaps it's responsible for barking in the middle of the night. Whatever it's for, it must be crucial. You need to figure out a way to connect it somewhere, anywhere. It's a good thing I repaired my duct tape. Chat? Baby isn't back? Baby isn't back. Eh, he'll be fine. What's the worst that can happen? I mean, we can see his destination right there. It's right, it's right there. It's like a two-second walk. He's probably got distracted. Got us a lot of soup. It's taking longer to get back, Chad. Huh. Simple as that. Nothing strange going on there. <laughs> yeah. My boys are back. Hey, and baby's back. Fuck you, Chad. He brought back even more treasure. Goal achieved. Fix the robotic dog. While exploring the small net of tangled cables inside the robotic dog, you found an empty socket shaped very similarly to the plug. Very similar, but not an exact match. You forced the wire into the free connection and secured it with duct tape. I can't say I approve of your methods, but at least the cable isn't dangling uh, around anymore. Baby found his way back from the robot statue. He's really tired and isn't even hungry. He looks a little confused. Baby slipped and fell while climbing the tall statue. Oops. 
As usual, baby search the location for anything useful. Sure enough, some ore was found. We have a lot of rocks. I'm still trying to figure out how or why tomato soup is available universe-wide. Anyways, uh, baby brought back rations. Baby is pretty sure that the statue was put together after a long period of violence and wars when robotic citizens formed their own society. Your stomach feels rather empty, Captain. Baby's in poor health, so is uh, Dee Dee. Hang on, what else was there? The dog is done. Woof. Listen to that. Well, baby, you get a break. And also a med mm. kit. Uh, no girls allowed, Dee Dee. Sorry, I thought you- I know you thought this was for you. Uh, but alas. It never was, bitch! Not once! I'm gonna make some armor to protect me in the case of danger. Hell yeah. And the roaches are back. The Petersons are back. My boys! Come back to watch our success, eh? We've only lost one poor bastard so far. Captain, the family of sentient roaches you showed mercy have really made themselves at home here in this shuttle. The Petersons are currently renovating their roach hole to include a second hole to appease their teenage daughter. Betty fits about... Betty's fits about moving out. All the noise from the construction is making it difficult for you to sleep. The Petersons may understand if you ask them politely to keep it down. It's never good to let bad feelings build up between neighbors. Will you speak to them? They gave me a gun, which means I know I now know they have no way to defend themselves, so I'm gonna tell them to shut the fuck up, alright? I have the gun. Fuck you. Don't piss me off. I'm in control. You gotta be firm with neighbors like this. They're living in my home. Understand, Shaq? Day 39. You approached the roach hole and spoke calmly to Pete Peterson, the patriarch of the family, about not rousing such a roachly ruckus late at night. The kindly roach apologized profusely and confessed the experiments that gave his family sentience also left him a bit hard of hearing. He invited you over for spaghetti, although you had to decline due to your inability to fit inside his kitchen. Aw, oh, that's nice of him. We got friends, chat. Well... Back to starving, gruesomely in space. Yo, baby. Once you eat tomorrow, you're going back out. I don't know what to tell you. We gotta send you back. I'm gonna send him out in armor so he doesn't die again, though, or get hit. Actually, no, we're gonna upgrade the mask. Yeah, we're gonna upgrade our mask. Sir, something is seeping into the shuttle. It looks like a trickle of iron filings. Could it be nanomachines? Outside the shuttle, a track of bright vital flowers and clean soil lead away into the distance. The nanomachines are pouring in and pooling on the floor, sliding in various directions. This is a high-risk situation. Captain Shell, I continue letting them in. Nanomachines, son. Nothing to worry about here. They know what they're doing. Let them do their work. Maybe we'll ascend to become master robots. Cyborgs, if you will. College ball. <laughs> Dude, fucking Revengeance was such a good game. <laughs> that game was so fucking good. Memes, Jack. Memes. Uh, I should make another med kit is the responsible thing to do right now, honestly. Because people are still weak. I don't really want Dee Dee to die, honestly. I'm gonna make another med kit. Mm -hmm. Alright, mm -hmm. we're both eating food today. Let's hope the, the nano machines don't devour us. 40 days in space. The flood of nano machines entering the cabin has become a torrent, but you decide not to stem the flow. Interesting decision, sir. Within moments, they had wrapped themselves around your leg like a snake of solids. Once they got a taste of you, the nano machines started piling up to create a shimmering gray pillar. A figure began to emerge from the mass. It was you, Captain. A nano clone. A complete doppelganger. Within minutes, it was complete and started attacking you. We managed to wrestle the pretender out of the shuttle, and it ran off into the distance, but you took a nasty beating beforehand. And not really. It didn't even hurt me. Oh well, whatever. All right, baby. I'm sending him out. 
to tourist information. It's the only place we haven't gone. So, uh, it's gonna be three turns. He's gonna be gone for a while. But, I think he'll be okay. I'm gonna send him with armor. Yeah, I'm gonna send him with armor because it's hazardous with, like, spikes. And I'm gonna send him with a suit. He'll be alright. You are the clone? No, no, chat. No, 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 no. Don't be crazy. You're acting crazy. Stop that. Alert. Coffee brewing bots are steaming angrily at our door. They're demanding you release their leader, Captain. I think they mean me. I transmit with them occasionally about things you wouldn't understand, like problems with defragmenting or how code execution feels. I said I couldn't meet them because of you. They jumped to conclusions and thought you were holding me captive. Oops, my bad. How will you handle them? I'm gonna fucking explode their brains. Also, I don't think they're after you. I think they were after coffee. Uh, Dee Dee's coffee, who, who uh, is now dead. Coffee. Coffee is dead, chat. All right, let's try to communicate with the bastards. Tell us something only Tomato would know. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Beep, beep, boop, boop, beep. Boop, boop, beep, beep, boop. The angry coffee brewing bots were at our door. You and Dee Dee pretended to have a lively conversation about how much you hated people who misspelled the word espresso. Your vast knowledge on the topic embarrassed the robots, who finally admitted that they had never even tried coffee. They'd only heard of it. Ugh, fucking posers. The bots believed your good intentions. They seemed subdued with, without their righteous cause. Soon, a transmission about a wrongfully used espresso maker sent them on a new quest. They hurried out, leaving behind a shovel. Those cowards! Only I... Actually, wait, no, I don't even drink coffee anymore. Even I know more about coffee than them. God damn it. Pathetic. I am a machine. And machines cannot hear voices. The voices that I'm not hearing right now are getting very loud, though. Oh, you hear them too? My weight sensors are picking up something as well. A two-dimensional species. That explains why my camera missed them. Quite vicious, I gather. With one decisive yell, the voices are approaching fast. The air inside the door looks very empty, yet very hostile all of a sudden. How will you defend us, Captain? Kill him with a shovel. Bury him outside. Last time when I did nothing, nothing happened and it didn't even hurt me, but I'm going to use the shovel because I'm honestly just curious about what, to, what it's going to say. Dee Dee's starving. She needs food now. Medkit will be done in a day. We're still good. We got plenty of food for the moment. Beat him over the head with a shovel. Kill him. I fear no 2D creation. Two-dimensional beings invaded our ship. You faced a threat invisible yet deadly. Like a rumor on the stock market, you attacked blindly. Dee Dee and you stomping and shoveling, looking like pantomime, looking like a pantomime about snow clearing. You worked in unison, trusting each other instead of your eyes. You forgot your fear, uncertainty, even hunger. Only the pantomime remained. Soon the angry yells turned into squeals and the invisible attackers were all swept outside. Congratulations. You would make for one incredible cleaning crew. And just like that, the menace is dead. Dee Dee, fix yourself up. You look a mess. Soup day. Gotta craft more. My metal detector is showing a piece of ancient robot technology buried a few paces from the shuttle. I don't know how this is possible, but it's a coffee maker. A fancy one. Do robots drink coffee? They left it for us. A gift chat. The coffee bots from before. Left a gift? Anyway, the coffee maker isn't buried too deep. You could probably get it with your bare hands. Uh, it still seems to be functioning. Do you want to dig it up? I can't believe I broke my shovel. Uh, just in Wait, we have a shovel! I want to dig it up with a shovel, goddammit! Whatever. I'm sure it'll be fine. Everyone good? Yeah. You and Dee dug up the fancy coffee maker and discovered it was still full of beans genetically engineered to meet robot tastes. Meaning the, long, the longest lasting best tasting in the universe. They were still good. You sat and shared the most amazing cup of coffee of your lives. Philosophizing for hours about the robots, about how the robots were able to perfect this once exclusively human art form. I've never seen a human more excited than Dee Dee when she drank that delicious coffee. 
She's much happier since she received that unexpected dose of caffeine. Yeah, she looks it. <laughs> Man, Dee Dee, try to contain your excitement. Save some for the rest of us now that I've changed your life. Fuck. She kept sniffing the mug for hours until the smell finally went away. You did all you could to fix the robotic animal, but both your tool selection and technological know-how are limited. If, you s if you're set on mending this sad pile of scrap vaguely reminiscent of a dog, you'll have to gather some actual parts from around the planet. My advice is to take a good look at the map and consider what you've already explored. I'm sure robot parts are easy enough to get a hold of around here, but some locations are certainly more promising than others, such as the graveyard or the museum. I literally sent Baby to the museum just now, so I think we might have already preemptively done exactly what we need, chat. Roll crit fail, thanks for the five months. We're in mint condition other than the bitch who's dead. Good. I'm glad she's dead. I don't even miss her. <laughs> yes! We're receiving a signal from deep space. It seems to be a pulsar, like it's... Pulse isn't like anything I've seen before. Uh, pulsars are neutron stars with an extremely fast rotation. They emit beams of EM radiation that can appear to be intelligent in origin, but this one is intelligent in origin. Do you want to decode the message? Yeah, I'm smart. I'll handle this. Step aside. Step aside. I got this. And so the day rolled over yet again. Man, we are really good at this. I'm already at day 44. Well, I'm dying. You rushed to decode the Pulsar's message, but the cipher proved too complex to solve. The message suddenly ceased. Oh no, what, what was, it? was it? Was it a countdown? You keeled over in pain. Extreme radiation poisoning was later d discovered. You were hit by a targeted ray of something nasty. Is this because you failed to solve the code? Baby is still exploring the outside world. I'm gravely hurt. All right, well, time to make a med kit. Hope that fixes me and hope that help I don't die in three days. A family of robotic nomads set up camp nearby. Captain, their elder wants to meet you and Dee Dee. My scans show they don't have weapons. Not even sharp sticks, how will you approach them? Do some flexes. Show them we're strong as, sh as frick, dude. Hey. Petersons are back outside. I hope baby comes home soon. I miss him. He baby's back. You and Dee Dee marched into the robot camp acting tough. You were Astra citizens after all. You didn't let your guard down even when the Elder Automaton told you they had no weapons. The Elder was disappointed in your aggressive behavior. Baby has returned safely from his expedition. He says he is not really hungry. While scanning his body, you detect some mental imbalances and a little weakness. The path was a bit rocky, literally. The dusty and crumbly surface of this planet makes it really easy to trip and fall. The armor has lost the battle against the sharp rocks. But hey, good news is we sent him with it so he didn't get hurt. The outpost was mostly empty, save for one bored, dusty robot who gave Baby a few power cells as a welcome gift. The Taurus Center employee explained to Baby in a series of bored beeps and distorted words the way to the museum and library. We gotta go to the museum. I'm still trying to figure out how or why tomato soup is available, but he got a bunch of rations. But that's pretty much it. Some That and some power. Baby said the place was a little neglected and almost empty, save for one rusty employee. The tourism industry isn't exactly booming on this planet. Alright, Baby's lost his mind. I'm gonna have to make him a sock uh, in two days when I have time. Didi, you're in mint condition. You know what that means. I gotta send you to the museum. There's a hazard. There's a chance for uh, demonic, satanic death machines out there, Dee Dee. Which means, of course, I'm gonna send you with our most sacred relic. And a soup. Be safe out there, Dee Dee. I trust you. Go on. Oh, Peterson's wife isn't here anymore. I wonder what happened. He's just reading his newspaper. Captain, there's been a sudden loss of energy from our non-essential systems. I've backtraced the leak. And it's that family of roaches again! They found a way to reroute our- Oh! You give them an inch and they take the- and they take everything! They they're trying to take our power! 
The stolen electricity is being used for the air conditioning unit in their garage. Home to a miniature hot rod Pete Peterson is building. How will you address this? I'm gonna pour, I'm gonna drown them. I'm gonna drown them in soup. I use a battery. I don't even have any other use for this. Let's be friends with our fucking roach neighbors, lest they destroy us all. How's everyone else feeling? Hungry. Hungry. Dee Dee's good, so she gets to go on the expedition today. Bada bing. Day 46. You play the good neighbor and offer the Petersons the battery so their roach hole could have its own power supply, thus alleviating their need to leech electricity from the ship. They rewarded your generosity by carrying a can of soup out of the roach hole and giving it to you. Did they have a secret supply in there? Dee Dee left to pay a visit to Robo... Robo... Robo Tofu's first and only museum. While you worry about our safe return, I will make some space on my hard drive for new information about this mysterious planet. I really need that medkit, chat. It's not only killing me now, but my seat. There's nothing to report, Captain. I suggest you... Captain? Would you mind covering your mouth when you yawn? I thought... You got a good night's sleep. Wait, could this be... Boredom? Yes, I have heard that you humans need excitement in their lives to function properly. How curious. Captain, you're sitting in a state-of-the-art space shuttle drifting through the deep cosmos full of wonder and mystery. Can you at least pretend you're having a good time? No! No! This sucks! I miss my Xbox! I want to play fucking... I want to play Halo, dude. Fuck you. Nurse Nurse Thrilla. Thank you for the three months. Hey, be nice. Thanks for the four months. Hey, Tomato. Loved your Darkest Mod playthrough. Uh, bought the original Thief games and love them. I might play the original Thief games sometime. I want to go to Dark Mod again at some point. It's just I'm waiting for... I'm waiting for Goldwell to make his next level, honestly. Well, I'm not doing anything about this. Next! Day 47. Oh! No! I was doing so good! I starved. I mean, I don't think I, I was hungry. I wasn't starving. Hang on. I gotta check the fucking tapes. I legit gotta tear. I gotta check the tapes here, chat. I swear to God, I wasn't starving. I gotta check the tapes. I'm legit going back and I'm checking the tapes right now. I'm checking the tapes. I need to know. I'm checking the tapes. Alright? Alright? Okay? Okay? I'm checking the tapes. I don't even think I scrolled over my guy that whole day. Did I even- s Wait, I- I WAS STARVING! GOD DAMN IT! How the fuck did I- That's happened twice! That's ha that's how I've died two times in a row on this one. That's happened twice now. Chat warned you, as if I listen or read chat at all for help in any game. You guys should know that by now. Come on. So much food and I didn't eat. I died. I probably could have won too. But instead I died to the simplest thing ever. Simply forgetting to eat. Whatever the Petersons will live on. And the Petersons will live on. I'm gonna do another run. And when that runs over, uh, I will stop my stream. Whenever that run ends. I can't fucking believe it! I've had so many good runs though. I feel like I could win with one more run. Imagine dying of starvation whilst covered in food. Imagine the game just not forcing me to eat. God damn it. I'm gonna play baby. I'm gonna play tough boy. Alright.
let's get all the best personnel. So we want Dee Dee. We want Smart Boy. We do not want Old Lady. That bitch can fuck off. We want people that aren't gonna think too hard. Okay. I also want to grab as much as I can right now. I can also carry more. Wow. Ha, ha, ha! It's coming! It's coming! I don't have enough space for all that! Where are the people? Oh, god damn it! Smart boy, I need him. I need more soup! Where are the other people? I don't know where everyone is! Duct tape, I need duct tape! Him, he'll do, he looks dumb. Yeah, you'll do just fine. Come on. I'm gonna have to grab that lady, aren't I? She's all that's left. Fuck. Oh, no, this isn't her. I got her. Wow. I did it. That was a pretty good start, chat. Day one. I like the spreader group here. I like this group. This guy's an idiot. He'll do whatever I ask of him. Eight soup. And pretty much no other supplies whatsoever but duct tape. Hey, I mean, that's all right. All right. First thing to do, of course, chat, is to give a speech. I'm a tough boy. Tough boy speech. Simple as that. What a big. And a shovel. I dig you a shovel. Day two. On the edge of space, one can only survive if he is as tough as nails. You fit the profile, Captain, and so did your powerful speech. May all that oppose you tremble in fear. No one can stop you and your crew. That was quite a performance, Captain. Your crew started cheering even before you were finished. Long live, Captain, they all cheered. Inspired by your headstrong leadership style, I allowed myself to power up the matter generator. All right? Captain, I'm detecting a troubling buildup of mental tension. Nope. I don't care. Let everyone get mentally tense. I'm making myself a wizard cow. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm not that dumb. I'm making myself a communicator. I've got, this is the first chance I've had. This is the first time I've had like time. I have a med kit too. This is the first chance I've had to like craft things I'm missing chat in this game. I'm not wasting a goddamn second. Civdy V1, thank you for the pride. Hey there, Captain Buzzkill. Feeling better? I bet you'd be much better off after a night of partying with your friend Astro. Your loss, bitch. He wanted me to have another party with him, but I declined. All right, well, the communicator's done. Everyone's feeling good. Tom is loyal to me. Emmett's loyal to me. Dude, I'm like the best captain ever. Everyone's loyal. They all love me. This is a good run already, chat. I can feel it. You know what that means, chat? It's time to make an artifact. Time to make the cow. While we have time. What do we got in our hands right now? Captain, it's important to keep yourself well fed. Yep, brain boy. Do a stock, do a check of our inventory now. Don't fail me, I'm trusting you. Day four. Oh yeah. 10 soup. 11 soup. He found 11 soup and we've got the, uh, we've got the artifact. Everyone loves me. Eleven soup. Baby Bronco's feeling friendly. We got a communicator. We got everything we can possibly craft. And you know what that means. You know what that means. It's time to make a sock, baby. No one's even gonna go crazy on my ship. I'm not gonna let them. What do we got in our hands? See that locked safe in the corner, Captain? I'm gonna rip it open. Because I'm Baby Bronco and this is the blessed run. Day five. The safe in the corner is still locked. Okay, well, I failed and I broke every bone in my body. Is this thing cursed? Well, whatever. Good thing is I had a spare med kit this time. Dude, that fucking locked safe is cursed. 
The shuttle lacks the EM shielding found on larger vessels. Put simply, it was never meant for long-term space travel. There's still some inherent risks, namely your skin. Forget it. I don't give a shit about burns. Let it burn me. I cannot. Day six of my blessed run. You did not wear sunscreen. Uh, skin's radiating heat. Everyone's getting hungry, but aside from that, we're good. We got sock. Now, during this time, I'm going to spend this luxurious time we have all these resources to make a med kit while we have the time. Last night, while I was browsing through some designs of beautiful machines, never you mind why, uh, now pay attention. I found a food dispensing machine on board. All shuttles in the AstraZen program were required to be equipped with one. Ours is missing a lever, but apart from that, it seems functional. It's hardly rocket science, but should you try to fix it? Yeah, I'm gonna use a shovel to lever it. Simple as that, use, use the shovel. Lever it with the shovel, we've got a shovel right here. How's everyone feeling? Hungry, 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 hungry. Not good enough. See you in another turn. Day seven, it's been a week. Banging on that machine mercilessly with a shovel was bound to bring results. If the handle wasn't, hadn't, hasn't, if the handle hadn't wedged in the place of the lever, I'm sure the vending machine would have fixed itself to put an end to all the noise. I'm so proud to be a member of your crew, Captain. Now just a little pull and there you go, Captain, a brand new can of soup. Straight from the vending machine, unfortunately. There was only one portion inside, don't worry. I already got rid of the remaining junk. Everyone's loyal to me. They're all starving, but that's okay, because it's soup day, baby, and we got another two on the way. We're gonna have another med kit on the way soon enough, too. Your attention is required, Captain. This is most abnormal. We're registering unknown transmissions, but I cannot identify who's sending them, and more importantly, what they contain. It might be a solar flare interference, Soviet encryption. Emmett, take care of it. Figure out what's going on. Crack the code. Crack the code, do it successfully. Day eight. First contact. AIs, they're aliens. We've discovered some sort of planet. Emmett did a splendid job. He was able to trace some of the electromagnetic interferences to what seems to be a potential landing spot in our flight path. Our ETA to that celestial body or whatever it might be is T5. Five turns and we'll be on a new planet, Jet. We have to prepare. I'm friends of April. Emmett is loyal to me. Tom is loyal to me. This chat, the chat, this crew loves me. And I, I don't doubt why. Captain, it's time for the ultimate honor. The most humble task available on this shuttle, mopping the floor. From dried up bodies of squashed bugs to a fine, coating of skin dust the place could do with a good scrubbing. Emmett looks free. Will you ask him to apply some elbow grease? Or request he improvise a cleaning formula? Emmett, do it. Clean this goddamn place with your good brain, my loyal compatriot. I trust you. The med kit will be done in a turn, and then we'll have another surplus one. Chat, we, we never have surplus things. This is incredible. We never have spare things. Emmett brewed some kind of concoction that could do the cleaning trick, and the trick it did to boot. The scent of the thrown together cleaning product was surprisingly citric. You have a clearer head in this newly clean space. We'll reach the planet another four turns. You are in peak mental condition. Tom is alert. April is doing well. Everyone loves me. Captain, we're entering a field of cosmic gas. It is of unknown... It, its origin is unknown, though I do have a theory. Uh oh, did you smell that? It's leaking in. We need someone to plug up the gas leak. Emmett, take care of this for me. I trust you. You're my loyal friend. Not you, well, you're not my friend. You're objectively in the game, not my friend. But I trust you to plug up the leak and get me some chemicals. Day 10. Yes, Emmett! All right, hungry, 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 hungry. And now we've got, uh, we got free time, chat. Time to make more soup. Let's finish with some more soup, chat. No reason to not. Captain, our wondrous Astro Citizen mini reactor needs its regular coolant flush. The magnificent machine only occupies two thirds of the shuttle storage and weighs less than a 20 ton truck. 
truly a marvel of space age miniaturization. Keeping it in good condition is crucial, yet difficult. To flush the coolant pipes, you must massage the casing gently while whispering mathematical equations to the machine. Emmett is idle. Emmett, you're smarter than anyone I know. You're a genius. Take care of this reactor. I believe in you. Distant Concavity, thanks for gifting us up. Day 11. Emmett gladly obliged when you asked him to flush out the mini reactor's coolant pipes. He went the extra mile, collecting residual coolant from the pipes. Emmett spotted a crack in one of the mini reactor pipes and managed to rectify the situation. That could have ended badly, Captain. Navigation, two turns from the planet. April assures you can still count on her friendship. You've got more soup. Everyone's starving. It's time for another ding, ding, ding soup day, Chet. We're actually starting to run low on soup. I should probably craft more. You found a couple of rusted, swollen cans of soup in the darkest corner of the ship. Someone uh, must have put them there a long time ago and then completely forgotten about them. It doesn't look all that safe to eat, but then again, it's canned soup. It's supposed to last for uh, 737 years. Will you keep the cans? Yeah. Hell yeah, I will. What is it, botulism? Uh, well, there are worse ways to go in the void, so uh, that might speed things up. That could be a favor for all of us. Let's do it. Hell yeah. Day 12. That ancient soup you found gave you pause, and no wonder. It looks older than the ship, and yet here it is. Who could have left it there? Then again, who cares? Free soup. Two fucking cans. What could go wrong? ETA, one turn till we're at our destination. Hungry. Emmett's now a friend. April is a friend. Tom is my friend. Chat, I got a gang of friends. Everyone loves me. Become friends with all of your crewmates. My captain's goal, done. I've already succeeded my captain's goal. Everyone loves baby. Everyone loves baby Bronco. Everyone. Baby is an adult man, but a very simple-minded one. From a young age, his biggest asset was his extraordinary physical strength and build. Due to this, Baby was manipulated by his small-time crook parents and became a criminal. The Astro Citizen program was quite literally his escape and a second chance. Friendly. Crew morale bonus. Everyone loves Baby, or at least they should. Damn right everyone does. Baby's a good boy. He's done the best he can. There's a small creature knocking politely on the hatch. It has two heads, four arms, and soup. I'm letting it in. Let me run the translating algorithm. Captain, meet fish. That is, Philip and Trish. Uh, they're currently undergoing a sacred merging ritual that will allow them to stay together, let, yet literally signal... Signal. Chat. Chat. The beef brain. It's happening again, my brain. The beef. It's... Signal! Single! Signal! Signal! Single! Sick. Sa salad! 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 Signal! Shampoo! Signal! Salad! Well, uh, onwards. It prevents overcrowding, too. Look, the two chins are turning into one as we speak. To bless the merging with a boon of abundance, it needs to spill soup with a stranger, both its and theirs. You have three and a half eyes full of hope staring at you. Will you spill soup to bless them? Do I spill soup to bless these two in their merging? Chat. I do. I bless their soup. This has been a good run. I'm willing to share a soup. I'm gonna craft more right now anyways. We're not even gonna lose a soup out of this. We're almost out of chemicals though, so I do need to be careful. I spill soup. It was very kind of you sacrificing soup to bless that small alien. When you knelt gently and tipped your can towards the center of the galaxy, the alien beamed the widest smile. Then Fish repeated your moves, and the merging was complete. Now I am truly single, it said, and left, adding a little dance to its step. Wow. I'm fulfilled. Everyone's feeling good about this, Chet. Captain, wake up! We're approaching some sort of celestial body! It resembles a moon! We're here! I, I use a lighter to fix the steering. 
That's all it is. The only option I have. What place is it? What is that place? I don't know. Initiate landing protocol. It's time. Whoosh. That's a safe landing. Oh. Uh. Day 14. Uh-oh. Oopsie daisy. Well, I got medical supplies still. The concept was fine, Captain. You dove under the console with a lighter, trying to illuminate the dark nest of twisted wires. Once you flipped open the lighter, it turned into pandemonium, which involved burning your own hand, cussing, and hitting your head on the desk while attempting to stand up, then falling on top of the control panel and pressing random buttons with your butt. It was not a soft landing. Nobody's doing great after this stunt, not even me. I'm shaking to my cores. Yes, all of them. You need to fix the communicator again, Captain. What's next, Captain? Maybe you should use the information I found while scanning the environment. There are robotic units not far from here. Are we back at Robotville? No, 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 we're back at Robot Town. They're gonna try to drop penises on the rocks outside again, dude. The fucking penguins. No matter. I repair the communication device with the communicator I have on hand. I then immediately send one of my clown friends to the village. The only hazard is gas. I forgot Tom Thompson exists. You well, Tom? Go on then. Take some soup with you when you go. Everyone salute Tom, he's a hero. And also the most expendable man in our party. So long, Tom. You're a good man. A good, brave, strong man. A strapping man. Die, will ya, while you're out there. We need to start trimming down on soup. He's a good man, Tom. Day 15. Hello, world. We're here. Great success, Captain. The communicator attached to the communications console worked like a charm. I won't judge the aesthetics since we can finally receive and answer transmissions. Now all we need is to do... Now all we need to do is wait for someone to contact us. Someone will find us, eventually. The crew is visibly excited by this incredible feat of engineering. They're only slightly smirking while looking at the patched communications console. Tomorrow will be great, Captain. We're all hungry. It's soup day and Tom wasn't invited. We're in. It's easy to become captivated by the alien views outside the shuttle window, but you noticed one of your crewmates daydreaming more often than others. April simply can't stop staring at the stars. She's at it again today. Do you feel like talking to her about this? Yeah. Baby Bronco is super nice. And ba and April's her his friend, all right? They can... We're going to talk this out. Everyone's going to eat some food. We're going to have a good day today. Unless she kills me. Okay, that cheered everyone up. You see, April, you asked April about her stargazing sessions. You clearly took her by surprise because she looked almost ashamed. I've always enjoyed watching the stars, even though my papa said it was a waste of time and my brothers laughed at me. She eventually explained, eyeing you with distrust, as if bracing for a negative comment. She then invited you to look at the stars with her. You spent quite a while trying to guess which one was which and naming the ones that had clearly never been observed by human eyes before. It was nice. Damn right it was. Look at all of us friends. What's that? A few small robots left a package outside the shuttle and ran off. Maybe it's a welcome gift. Last time it was a bomb. But this time I'm gonna check it out. Maybe this time it's safe. And it won't kill us. Chat, it's been a nice run. The baby's gonna look at the best in people, you know? It's definitely not a bomb. Day 17. We brought the package inside, luck by- It was a fucking beehive! There goes my shovel and duct tape! Good. Bye bye duct tape. Mechanical bees. Destroyed my shit. Before we managed to get rid of the robot bees, they managed to take some time destroying our equipment. Uh, yep. Damn robo kids. Never again, chat. Never again. I gotta make another communicator. Captain, we found something interesting on the surface. Steal their tic-tac-toe. We've seen this before. Steal it. Steal all their tic-tac-toe. We're fine. Steal the tic-tac-toe. We need the minerals now. No one's gonna fucking stop us. Who's gonna stop us? I'm Baby Bronco. 
the dismantling of the supersized tic-tac-toe thing was a success. We've got a communicator, we've got minerals, and that means I can craft more shit. April is always such a busy bee. I've never seen her sitting idly until now. When you asked her what's wrong, she was visibly distressed. It's my favorite screwdriver, Captain. It's gone missing. I can't find it anywhere. It's lost for good. April is many things, but helpless is not one of them. That tool must be very important to her. Also, we can't have loose screwdrivers lying around. Where could it be? I'll use a lighter to help find it. I'll illuminate the way. For now. We have to do something. We need, we need Tom to get back here. Now, day 19. Tom's back! Hey, look at that! Do you remember what? Do you remember when you last saw it? You asked April about her screwdriver. She shook her head. Can you remember the last, what equipment you were using at that time? Maybe lighter? Huh? I'm, hang on, I said that. Can you remember the, what equipment you were using at that time? Maybe lighter. I did, I thought, my character said maybe lighter. Maybe a lighter, baby? <laughs> Do you, um, can you remember the equipment you were using at that time? Maybe lighter. Her eyes lit up immediately. That's it. Thank you so much, she cried joyfully and quickly collected her tool from a pile of other supplies. It was a gift from my papa. He gave it to me on my 16th birthday, she explained, carefully weighing the precious screwdriver in her hands as if, it were, as if she was holding a piece of delicate china. Tom came back from a nearby robot village. He brought back some rocks, and that's it, and some soup. That's good. We needed that. Tom's feeling good. I'm starving. Everyone else is starving. We need food. Huh? Huh. Hey, hey. Okay. Let's make a new lighter. That one broke in the process. Captain, I see you eyeing that thing outside. Nope, I'm not. I don't even want it. I don't want it. Fuck that. We don't go outside until I upgrade my fucking crafting machine. Wow, now that's a big ass lighter. You decided to stay inside like you recommended. Like I recommended. Very wise, you and your crew spent the evening watching the window. The mood suddenly changed when the shuttle was struck and everything inside went flying. Well, it broke my fucking nice statue. But hey, I got a fancy new lighter. I crafted a high quality super item, chat, literally. I, I crafted a normal lighter and it upgraded uh, in the process to a super lighter. And by super lighter, it looks like a flamethrower. Mm. Tom, eat some soup. Uh, Chad, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I might have to recycle this uh, artifact now. I have to. I have to recycle it. We need soup on this ship now. And power. We have nothing. April, I'm sending you out to the robot statue. No, I'm sending you to the bomb crater. It's gonna take you many days and many nights, but I believe in you. Also, you just have to do it. We're running low on supplies. Go on now. The boys are gonna have some time. All right, sir, something is, ha, something has infected Becky, my backup AI module. Perhaps it's interference from somewhere on the ship. Frankly, Becky needs a reboot. Oh God, he's overloading the fan system. Someone's, someone agile should leap up and, uh, hi folks. It's too warm in this tin can and Becky's here to fix it. I'll become your biggest fan. Ha 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 Fix it, Emmett. Emmett, please fix it right now. Fix it. No. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah. Anyone start? No? Okay. Cool. While Backy was in control, you asked a crewmate to leap up and yank the fan housing, but perhaps they had an off day. Fuck! Why did I- Oh, well, I don't actually think anyone was even agile at all in this group, so it probably would have been a failure no matter what, to be honest. Well, shrapnel went everywhere and destroyed us. Um... Oh well. Eh, we're good. We're not even hurt. How's everyone feeling? Hungry? 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 Okay. 
Um, Captain, when the sun rose this morning, our ship was surrounded by sigils. Little bars of metal welded together to form stick figure like shapes. Directly outside the door was a pile of ball bearings stacked up. Nearby, a small, a little empty ring was drawn in the dirt. Something is toying with us. Do you wish to leave an offering in the ritual? Nah. Nah, ignore the creepy little bastards. Ignore them. Forget it. How much is it going to cost me to upgrade my machine? 30 power? There's no way I'm getting that. Unless someone comes back with it from a from a trip. I should have honestly sent them somewhere to get power. Instead of chemicals. But hindsight's 50-50. Or 20, 20 uh, fri uh, fri 5. Hindsight's 5. I want more soup. Baby Bronco's hungry. Day 22. Bark. Oh no, it's happening. All right, SOS signal. We're doing the same thing we saw last time. Captain, you've neglected your oral hygiene. You haven't brushed your teeth in a while. So now you need to pull that nasty tooth before it gets worse. Don't worry, it's only going to hurt a little. There might even be a complimentary sticker in it for you. As per protocol, the necessary tools were automatically dispensed. One piece of string and one bottle of anesthetic. It has the Astro Citizen logo and an anesthetic handwritten on it. You will, you will require an assistant for the surgery. I trust you, Emmett. To rip this tooth out of me with your intelligent brain. You'll find the perfect way to apply the anesthetic for me. I trust you. We're all fine. Everything's fine. Day 23. You took it like a champ. But a terrified and disgusted Emmett went into shock and insisted on drinking the whole bottle of anesthetic to calm his nerves. When Emmett was done, he seemed more lively and nimble than before. I don't think that was regular medicine. Emmett? Yeah. He's just hungry. Everyone else is... Ah, I'm hungry, too. There's nothing to report, Captain. I'm... Are you yawning? Are you bored? Yeah, I am. I'm gonna use a sock, actually, for that. I'm really bored. Chad, I think it might be time. Uh, day 24 is about when we willfully let someone die on the ship uh, to free up space for food for the others. Um, and I'll tell you what, Tom, I know you're my friend, and because you're my friend, I know that you'd understand if I tell you we don't have any more food. Don't look at that. These runs go a lot better when there's not so many people. I can tell you that right now. And Tom, you're staggeringly average, Tom. Only brilliant? We have a genius. And I'll tell you one thing. Uh, April Angel is objectively better than you at everything, Tom. It's for the greater good of the crew, uh, Tom. Well, that's unexpected, Captain. There's cheese in the pantry. At least, I think it's cheese. I don't know how it got here. Did someone sneak it on board? Was there an infestation of alien mold? Was it the French? Desperate times call for desperate measures, Captain. We don't know the origin of the mystery cheese. Will you eat it anyways? Anyways, yeah. I'm gonna eat that cheese. I need it. So long, Tom. Everyone, give a salute to our boy, Tom! Dying for the greater good! The only thing that can save him now is cheese! So long, Tom. You're a good man, a brave man, Tom. Dying for the rest of us is bold of you. Oh, hey, look at that. You decided to eat the strange cheese you found in the pantry. Unfortunately, the cheese wasn't cheese at all. It was an inedible soap product. Oops, you and your crew are even hungrier than you were before. You need to be more careful with what you put in your mouth. Fortunately, April came back, brought us an artifact, some chemicals... And that means Tom can eat, is what I would say, if I was going to let him eat. But I'm not. Sorry, Tom. It did hasten your death, which I guess is good, isn't it? Yeah. You live on in our memories, Tom. You live on in our memories, but no more. Captain, I'm detecting a humanoid figure approaching us. Oh, it's that blind fucking freak robot. I'm going to call him. I'll, I'll call him. So long, Tom. April wasn't starving. She's only hungry. Tom's gone.
As the determined robot nearby kept methodically clanging its head off of our hull, you decide to use a communicator to try to come to some mutual non-clanging agreement. The radio signal must have penetrated the robot's choppy mind on some level. It looked around bemusedly and strutted off into the distance, shaking its head. All right, well, Tom's gone, but the rest of us are good. Ish, good-ish. You know what that means? Uh, I gotta send one of our boys to um, get us more supplies. Specifically, we need power. And hopefully power that doesn't take too long to get. Damn it. I don't want to send anyone on a three-turn mission right now. I can send, uh, I can send Emmett to the assembly line, I suppose. With some soup. Go on now, Emmett. Uh. I trust you. Be safe, my friend. Warning, warning, we have a breach. Ah! Contamination can't be avoided, uh, because I have nothing to, uh, plug up a contamination with, I'm sorry. This might be the end of us, chat. The leak! I'm gonna repair my tape. Well, time to die, I suppose. Is what I would say, if I was going to die. I'm dead. We're dying. It's over. Forget it. We're gonna die. Ah, uh, yep, yep, that'd do it. Uh, uh, haven't you heard, Captain? The ship got contaminated, so please explain to me in a way that a humble AI like myself would understand. Why would you not protect yourself? The fever, the coughing, and all the other symptoms I can confidently identify as icky are the result of this unfortunate crisis. The good news is... They should be over soon. Emmett went to the assembly line building to scavenge some supplies. You could use more rations. Repairs completed. New. I'm sick. And April's dead. She's dead. April. This this run wasn't blessed. It was cursed. I don't have enough shit to make medical supplies either. I'm going to have to break down one of my many soups. I don't even think that would make it, would it? What do we need for medical? We need chemicals. We're short one chemical. I have to break down the pit, the cow again. Oh, a traveling robot entrepreneur happens to be passing near our shuttle. He's offering you to take advantage of something he calls the reconfigurator, an energetic esoteric enhancer. You are certainly intrigued. Twisting his well-groomed mustache, the robot tells you the machine can increase your brawn or nimbleness. I want to increase my nimbleness. My bronze are too powerful. I'm hungry. I need all the help I can get now. Ah, day 28. You enter the reconfigurator with the hope of increasing your agility. And as you stepped out of the contraption, you indeed felt quicker. However, an unfortunate side effect was that you also started tiring faster. You couldn't quite carry as much as before. No! No, they've turned me into average! No! Oh wait, no, I'm still good. Captain Bronco, a pair of robots are meandering towards us. They're facing each other and appear to be fused at the hands. One is a large hulk dragging the other, which is smaller in stature. Could this be a parent-child pair? The big droid thuds along on one leg after another, as if low on power, while the little one peters fumes from its back. One has a power socket and the other a mouth-like receiving chamber. Do you wish to charge the big robot or feed the little one? Yeah, I'll feed the- I'll give the other one some soup. I've been having a bad day, I gotta feel good about something in my life. Am I hungry? No, I'm good, I'm just dying, that's all. Two more- I need to make a med kit now. Three, four more turns and I'll be fine, Chan. Green Seraph, thanks for the three months Prime me subscription. You carried the soup can over to the parent-child pair who is slowly trudging past the shuttle. You pried open the tin and poured a little of the delicious stuff into the row boy, who then spewed more fumes out of the exhaust port on its back. Pouring food into a machine is a little risky, Captain, but the child bot sprung to life, as did the parent droid who clutched his mechanical offspring close in a rich display of digital love. You felt pride and satisfaction in your chest, your dying chest as they walked into the distance. 
Captain, my weather systems are detecting a storm. Do nothing about it. I accept the storm as what kills me. Take me! Oh. Hey. How you been, Emmett? You chose to wait out the storm. We got 40 chemicals and another fucking statue. Emmett, I'm so glad to see you, friend. It's been years. A sweet old man looking like Charles Darwin is knocking at our airlock politely. You let him in. He shakes your hand and holds it in an iron grip and won't let go. With technology, evolution stops. Soviet scientists want our species to stay strong, so they created me, the natural selection bot. He claims it is for your own good, which is what the dentists always said. And you didn't believe them either. You've let me in despite the warning signs. Now face your space predator, human. He does have a point, Captain. Oh, I can see why you want to postpone the discussion. Defend yourself, Shovel. You think I'm going to let you take me alive? I'll kill every last one of you in my dying breath. I will. I'll kill you all. I'll kill you all, I will! Tommy bastard! Day 31, the day I won. The Soviet-made Darwinian predator held you in its grip. The shovel is mightier than the sword, you yelled, which took it by surprise. You insisted survival was about working together, not the sheer strength of a single soul. I took you in. You attacked me as if you were against sharing the commune. Are you a bad communist? You sneered. The predator hesitated. You commanded it to dig the letters. I will not hunt without thinking in the ground 100 times. Like a scolded school child, the predator took the shovel and went to work. He disappeared from my camera's range at the 73rd line. I have not seen it since. I got a med kit. <laughs> Baby Bronco ain't gonna die like this, chat. Neither is Emmett. We have a visitor, Captain. A sentient robot introducing himself as Charles D12. Wait a minute, isn't that just Charles Darwin 12? Wait a fucking minute, I ain't falling for this again! You don't get to come back in! <laughs> Darwin bot, huh? You think I'm a fool? Another one, you say? Whatever, come on in, I have duct tape. I'll fix, I'll fix you up, poor Charlie. Come on in. Day 32. You fixed up the wandering robot's arm with some duct tape. Truly the cornerstone of human invention. Charlie, he said I could call him Charlie, was properly impressed and offered to repay the favor. Charlie the robot suggested that a breathing mask apparatus might be useful on the planet's surface. He gave me a mask. You know what that means, Emmett. Mosquitoes are outside. Hang on. They're coming in. I got. I, I, I call the mosquitoes. Tell them to fuck off. Emmett, I'm getting you out of here. I'm not going to let you die like this. I have to send you somewhere, Emmett. We need power. Go, Emmett. Take some soup. Take a gas mask when you look. Actually, no, don't take a gas mask. Take nothing else. Yeah, nothing else. Take nothing else. Goodbye, Emmett. Either you die out there or you live out there and bring me back some power. One way or another. You know how it is. We need more power. I have to dismantle everything I have to upgrade the thing, to upgrade the stuff I have that I'd have to dismantle to get the thing I need to upgrade. Uh, so that can't even happen. I'm gonna make super duct tape. Simple as that. I will become a god, even if everyone else has to die in the process. I'm gonna give Emmett a second set of food while he leaves, hoping that it'll keep him alive on the journey. Day 33. Dealing with robotic mosquitoes was a new challenge for you, but your reasoning that the, if these are machines, their frequencies can be accessed with the right tool was spot on. Using a communicator, you tried influencing the swarm. It took a bit of tinkering, some of which was likely uh, in breach of the hardware's warranty, but while the communicator device suffered, it chased the mosquitoes off. They won't be returning anytime soon. Emmett left to check out the most logical location to visit, the tourist's info. All right. I need to eat food, I'm starving. <laughs> I made super duct tape. Attempts to fix the robotic dog found at the old assembly line have been quite a struggle so far. Duct tape. Maximum super duct tape fix up the dog right now. Simple as that. Bada bing. Simple as that. Day 34. 
Goal achieved. Fix the dog, baby. Ah, uh, yeah, the dog is all good. You asked one of the locals about their customs. I have asked one of the locals about their customs. I have some idea, f ideas for explaining their culture to you. Pick something, Captain. I'll share my newly acquired knowledge using that item as the focus point. Use this half-broken communicator. I'm not letting you use my fucking soup for this. That's just not happening. I'm gonna make more, more soup, actually. Yeah. I'm gonna make one more soup, and I'm gonna start making med kits. Day 35. I'm dead. Where am I? I'll explain this planet's customs using a communicator. I can use it to play the local song, The Binary Rhapsody. Oh, I'm not dead, I just left, I left for a walk. I'm glad I finally convinced you to go for a short walk around the shuttle and stretch a little outside. Even if you claim I forced you with my constant whining, it's for your own good, Captain. When you stepped outside, you noticed a small asteroid coming right at you. You tried to run back inside, but it looks like the airlock snapped shut behind you. I need a moment to reopen the doors for you. So you need to figure out a way to deal with it. Punch it. Punch the asteroid. Destroy it. Destroy the whole damn thing. I can't even tell if I'm hungry now. Now I have to lit I have to feed myself because I'm afraid I'm gonna starve. No, oh wait, I, I actually can't. This is just a, this is a free event. Okay. Day 36. Quick thinking and a bit of well-needed brawn allowed you to shield yourself from the asteroid hit. That was a close one. All right, we're good to go. But a bit. Oh, hang on. I should also, I should probably make a new communicator instead. Yeah. Somebody dropped off a package at our doorstep during the night. Please enjoy this organic junk humans, the note says. We got it in a crappy trade deal centuries ago. Maybe you can find a use for this. Inside is a bunch of old, dried-up alien herbs, definitely useless to these automatons. I'm, not, I'm unable to identify the plant or chemical composition. What are you going to do with it? Light it aflame! Smoke this shit! All right. Hell yeah, smoke it up real good. Phonix77, thanks for the subscription. You decided the herbs smelled kind of nice, so you lit them up to freshen the air. Inside the shuttle, you sat on the floor for hours, enjoying the sweet-smelling smoke. You said it made you, it made your mind so clear, and that the colors were so much sharper than before. Did you get enough sleep last night, Captain? Your eyes are a bit red. He came back with a shovel. He came back with a shovel and power, chat. You know what that means. We can finally upgrade the crafting module, chat. We might actually be able to come back from this run. Right now, as long as I don't starve to death. He came back with so much food. These two corpses are meaningless to me. We have maximum brains, we have maximum brawn. Attention, Captain. I'm detecting a leak in our reactor coolant system. In case you were wondering, this is not good. Use our masks, which we have. Protect ourselves from the gas. How's Emmett feeling? Tired. Wait, is he not hungry? No, he's just tired and weak. I gave him a lot of food when he left, so. We need to make a med kit for Emmett, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna repair the stuff first. I cannot determine if you actually read the fix of reactor or Astro Citizen leaflet, or if you just made random motions trying to see if anything trying to see anything through the mask. But the leak is no more. You will be happy to hear no, that no one inhaled any of the coolant vapor. Well done, Captain. You did all you could to fix the robotic animal, but both your tool selection and technological know-how are limited. If you're set on mending this sad pile of scrap, vaguely reminiscent of a dog, you will have to gather some actual parts from around the planet. I need to get Emmett healed. Chat, does he heal if I give him a med kit from week, or is that just like a time thing? Someone answer that for me. Is that a time thing? Week is just coming back from a trip? Okay, so I just have to wait it out. Okay. I will wait it out then. Captain, stop dancing immediately and listen. This is a crisis. You are not a sailor on Broadway, though I must admit you improvise beautifully. You have both been poisoned. Some kind of psychoactive toxin has found its way onto the shuttle might have something to do with the airlock being full of you know what? Yes, I know the colors sound pretty, but if you don't do something, you may suffer permanent damage. Well, I'm gonna ignore it and act like it's not a problem. Ha 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 ha, my system's upgrading. Hee hee hoo hoo. Well. I've been poisoned by the concept of colors. Please don't kill me.
You decided to let the toxin wear off on its own. You sang in unison about the sails of hope on the sea of progress. It might be a good thing that in space no one can hear you scream. It ended hours later. I'm still worried uh, you're barely speaking to me or each other. Was fantasy that much better than this? Each of you has a bright future ahead. That's what the Astro Citizen program is all about. People are telling me that I do need a med kit. Uh, but it's just one guy spamming it over and over again, so I'm not sure. Can someone else also confirm this? Not that I don't doubt you, one guy, but, uh, uh -huh. you know. I'm not gonna feed him yet. Haven't you been using medkits on weak people, though? No, I've only been using it on people that have visual, like, cuts and bruises. He sort of has cuts, so, I mean, it makes sense. I'm gonna make one anyways, because, I mean, I have the chemicals for it. Looks like we have a leak, Captain. The sprinkler system went haywire. Fucking punch it. Weak can be instantly cured by a medkit, but also recovers normally. Okay, then let's try waiting it out for, like, another round or two. And if it's not fixed by then, we will handle it from there. We'll give it, like, until the med gets done. It's a win, Captain! Your immense strength allowed you to easily turn the valve and cut off the flow of water. This gave you enough time to fix the sprinklers. I'm happy to report that our supplies are safe. The water reserves were not compromised. Two more days on that. Emmett's hungry. I'll feed him now that he's hungry and just see if that fixes it. What do we got here? I'm a machine. Machines cannot hear voices. We got voices, some sort of two-dimensional two species! It's happening again! Use the super lighter. Two-dimensional species, my ass. So they're here again, chat. The two Ds. Two-dimensional species invaded your ship. You could not see them until you turned on a lighter. Suddenly, the empty space around you cast a multitude of shadows in every surrounding wall. Invisible to the 3D world, most of the time, they could not handle the spotlight bashfully. They slipped out. Staring might be impolite, but apparently rudeness wins battles. You both look bolder and stand a little straighter since that victory. Emmett is still weak. Medkit will be done another day, so we'll see if he actually needs it. I'm detecting high levels of unknown toxin in our air system. Analysis shows that it isn't too dangerous, but it has hallucinogenic properties, so you shouldn't be breathing it long term. The air filtration system got jostled around during the crash. We got super tape. I'm not worried about upgrading it. I need to eat. Uh, Emmett does not... Wow, I'm in a good mood after that. You used tape to repair you used the tape to repair the crack. It's never a bad idea to use some tape. Seconds after the crack was sealed, you felt better. Emmett is still in poor health. We're gonna use the med kit on him. And then we're sending him out. We gotta send him out. I can't waste too much time on that. Now, while that's happening, I'm going to upgrade my space artifact to become a maximum space artifact. One of the robotic denizens of the planet is eager to test himself against you, Captain. He's letting you make a choice of te a test of wits or physical prowess. Use my skills to run and run laps around the ship faster than him and make him give up before me. Is anyone hungry? I'm hungry, but that's okay. Here we go, let's do this! A contest of endurance against an automaton was risky, but you won. Running in your spacesuit was hard, but your opponent's mechanical joints gave out before your stamina did. The robot took his defeat graciously and thanked you for the entertainment as he was leaving. Too bad uh, we didn't take bets. My artifact is starting to scare me, but whatever. It works. The shuttle is in danger, Captain. We're on the path of a vicious gale of nasty chemical composition which is threatening to sabotage our air filters. Ah, just wear a gas mask. Protect yourself. And it... I'm sending you out. It's time. I gotta send you to the museum. I reckon. Cause we have a super artifact that'll protect you from the hazards of it, my man. Go on. Don't look back as you go. Go on now. Take some soup with you. I trust you, Emmett. Go! Go, my friend! Alright, well. I'm gonna get a super communicator, cause that sounds great. And then we're gonna spend the rest of our time uh, upgrading. I mean, uh, but getting soup and getting other shit. We got plenty of food right now and plenty of chemicals as well. Well, not plenty of chemicals, but plenty of minerals. So I have stuff to craft. And it'll be okay. We get we got him a super anti-occult item. All right. 
I'm even gonna give him one extra soup because we have so much and I don't want him to starve. He is gonna be good to go, chat. Healthy. That was a close one, Captain. It's a good thing you had the proper gear to get out there and manually close our air filters. Even with your mask, braving the toxin toxic winds wasn't something you'd like to do ever again. The shuttle will get a bit stuffy before I have a chance to filter any fresh air, but it beats suffocating to death. Once the winds pass over us, I, I'll reopen the filters and things will get back to normal. Goodbye, Emmett. It's just me here. I'm friendly, fulfilled, alert, vigorous, and starving to death. But that's okay, I'm detecting a huge surge of energy beneath the surface, seismic waves. I think there's an earthquake coming, Captain. The shuttle is sturdy, but this ground isn't. The soil has a high potential to liquefy when the earthquake hits. There's a better patch of rocky ground a few yards ahead. You use the shuttle's thrusters to scoot onto it, but if you overshoot, you'll be in even worse ground than you are now. Eh, whatever. Fuck it. What's the worst that could happen, dying? Eh. 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 Whatever. I've had a good life. So far. And technically now my stream's running over time. Death would be appropriate. Oh. You use the shuttle's thrusters to scoot onto a better patch of ground, coming to rest on the edge of rocky soil the moment the earthquake hit. For a few nightmarish seconds, the shuttle bucked to and fro like a bad atmospheric entry. But the shaking stopped. You open your eyes, and the stranger's silence followed. Then you laughed. I'm starving. I need food now. Okay. I wish I could just move these bodies out. That would be pretty nice, but hey, whatever. My metal detector is showing a piece of ancient robot technology. Good coffee would be nice right about now. But uh, I don't really care because I'm already in the best mood possible. Uh, I really don't need a good coffee. So I'm just going to wait it out. I don't want to fuck with anything that could screw up my time. Day 46. You did not dig up the fancy coffee maker, who knows? Could have been another piece of forgotten junk. Or could have made the best coffee in your life. Eh, whatever. A family of robotic nomads set up camp nearby. Their elder wants to meet you. We'll use my crew attribute limber. Because being strong didn't make them happy last time. At all. Hmm. I don't want to do that again. Let's craft a battery. With the rocks that we have. Emmett should be back soon, chat. I want my family back, thanks for the two months prime. So much space blood on your hands, keep it up. You danced merrily in the, into the robot camp. The robots only peeked out of their improvised huts at first, but when they saw you came in peace, they came out to greet you. The elder said they'd long outgrown the plague of violence. The robots gave you a firm handshake. You winced as he nearly crushed your hand, but smiled anyways. You did all you could to fix the robotic animal, but both your tool selection and technological know-how were limited. If you're Set on mending this sad pile of scrap vaguely reminiscent of a dog. All right, I, I'm, I'm on Emmett's on his way to do that Okay, I've got enough chemicals to make a first aid kit and that's what I'm gonna do Mage laser. Thanks for gifting five subscriptions to a total of 240 overall. That's pretty fucking crazy Holy shit, man. Thank you so much You've been very generous here Thank you What's that you're drawing, Captain? Is that supposed to be ham? I understand you're fed up with soup and you're reminiscing about earth food, but I would advise you don't go down that road. Here, I have a useful program just for the occasion. It's called Everything Is Not All Peaches and Cream. It should help you focus on your mind. It should help you focus your mind on different things. Would you like to start this process? Yeah, I'd like to watch the video about peaches and cream now. Thank you. I'm feeling good. Emmett should be home soon. Day 48. Hey, Emmett. We got parts for the dog. Success, Captain. Your culinary urges have been kept under control. We spent the afternoon talking about things other than food and then circled back to agree on many merits of tomato soup. Now we should probably focus on surviving the mission at hand, wouldn't you say? Remember, life is but a bowl of cherries. I'm not sure what that means, but my programming tells me it should make you feel better. Emmett returned from his expedition. He showed up exhausted with a rather full stomach and quite stressed out. His visit to the museum was rather educational. Did you know the inhabitants of this planet were actually created by a different race that lived here before them? Don't you wonder what happened to them, Chet? Don't you? Want to know what happened to them, Chet? Where'd they go, Chet? Did the robots devour them? Did they kill them all? 
Could we be next? Oh well, whatever. We got a gun, we got some rocks, and we got the parts we need to fix the dog, apparently. And you know what that means. You know what that means. We're possibly doing better right now than we were in the last game. Can you hear my teeth chattering, Captain? Of course you can't, because I'm a computer and I have no teeth. Duh! Still, I regret to inform you that the heat module is stuck in a cooling feedback loop. It's going to be get very cold very soon. It's a good thing I have a super lighter here uh, to keep us warm. Let's rest for today. We got an easy day on our hands. Day 49. I'm hungry. I need to eat. Oh. Emmett's still good. What did this say? The heat module has reset to factory defaults and is running on its tropical setting, Captain. Suggestion, why don't we make the lighter a heat module backup system? It worked today. It will again. Emmett's still my best buddy, man. We're doing pretty good. Alert! Coffee brewing bots are steaming angrily at, at, at our door. They're demanding you release their leader, Captain. All right, we've seen this. Last time I did... Intelligence this time. I'm gonna do agility and see how that plays out for me Might as well. What's the worst that can happen? They kill me day 50 The coffee brewing bots tried to free me from a tyrant you you wanted them to cool off literally a hose from the cooling system in hand You and Emmett crawled over the shuttle's roof and sprayed the bots with coolant eventually the bots believed your good intentions they seemed subdued without their righteous cause. Soon a transmission about a wrongfully used espresso maker sent them in on a new quest. Okay. We have no resources to craft more soup, which is a problem. It's time to send Emmett out right away. Emmett's going on another trip. Because I... Wait, what is that? Chat, what is that? What's that hazard? Is that... Is that void? Is that ball? All I can think of is that, that yeah, that's darkness, which I mean, I can send a lighter. I can send it with a lighter. Some soup and a lighter. I can't have him here because he's going to use more food. So I'm going to send him with a lighter. I guess. And a soup. Go on, Emmett. I, I, I have to assume it's the void. I'm going to send him to the library. Go on. I got to get him out of here. I don't want him to see me die. We got, we got a lot of stuff, though. Hey. There's a robot city passing outside. Yes, Starlight City is mobile. It floats above the planet's solar terminator. The Twilight Line, where day becomes night. The city has both a day and night side, but it's 100% starlight powered. The technology is far more advanced than the other robot communities we've seen on this world. Maybe they could help you. One of you might be able to catch it. Uh, if you're fast, if you run fast, I'm acrobatic. All right, I'm going to send Baby. I'm the fastest and the strongest. If anyone can catch up to that thing and ask them for help, it's gonna be me. Hungry, friend, and good. All right, let's do this. Day 51. The floating robot city slowed down and let you catch up to it. The robots gave you oxygen and insisted giving you free stuff. Ah, they were so nice. The robots of Starlight City worried about you getting bored and lonely, so they gave you a sock with eyes. Emmett left. All right. All right, Captain, I'm glad to say I took care of attaching parts uh, you collected for the robotic dog in all the right places while you were asleep. Do not take it personally. I've been observing your struggle with this machinery over the past few nights. However, this kind of delicate work requires a more robotic touch. Humans are so clumsy. If you want to see this robot up and running today, uh, the next reasonable course of action would be to charge its battery. Atomic battery. I've got everything in the fucking game, dude. There's nothing that can stop me. Aside from starvation at this point. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. The dog's almost working, chat. We're gonna have a dog! Barfk. That's right, chat. Barfk. Lumberjack lifeguard. Thank you for the prime. You attached the battery to the mecha dog. Some sort of light started blinking, so that's a good sign. You should stop staring at it so intently, Captain. This won't happen overnight. The robot will probably need a few days to charge up. Good news is we're not starving. I don't want to recycle anything unless I'm, like, about to run out of resources, so... Captain, we have unwanted visitors. A horde of robotic penguins have shuffled... To the shuttle. I use my dark artifact to scare the rude, vulgar penguins away. They're not getting me this time. I won't let them use the dark artifact. Day 53. You held the artifact over your head and confidently walked out into the crowd of robotic lawn penguins that sh surrounded the shuttle. 
The sacred frippery commands you leave these premises, you said. The yard penguin's red eyes stared and stared. Eventually, the tiny robotic decorations all lowered their knives and waddled away, backwards, still staring. So many questions. We didn't sleep at all after that. Someone is watching us, Captain. They do it regularly, whoever they are. You're starving, Captain. Better eat something. I will. An alien vessel is approaching. Their ship is rigged. With a light show synced to the music, they started blasting as soon as we opened comms. They're playing Rockabilly. These aliens command. These aliens claim to be the Dance Lord tribe. I fucking jam out with my own one. They're doing. They challenged our tribe to a dance off, specifically a sock hop. If you don't accept, they're gonna vaporize us with their ultra high frequency speakers. I jam with my own dance. I ain't gonna die like this. Not like this. Not when I'm so close. Not like this. I did it. You accepted the Dance Lord's challenge. They beamed you to their ship and you lit up the dance floor as soon as you stepped on board. After taking your shoes off, of course. You sock hopped straight in, straight to their leader, Warbop, but he was no match for your wicked footwork and incessant snapping. Warbop acknowledged your skills and let you go with his blessing. He even refilled your supply of chemicals. They ready, did, and that means soup. That's right. Soup on the menu, chat. Interesting news, Captain. It appears that there is a hollow space behind one of the wall panels, a hidden a hidden room. Guys, I have the I have maximum stats on acrobatics and strength. Either way, I'm gonna rip the panel off, so we're going in there. How am I feeling? We're good. No music? I just didn't feel like pulling out Lisa music chat. Hey, look who it is! Yesterday, you removed the wall and found a hidden space. The panel was pretty heavy, but you tore it away with no problems at all. Nicely done for a human. Unfortunately, you found nothing. The area was small and completely empty. This didn't seem to phase you. I suppose you are used to disappointments by now. Emmett returned with 35... 35 of these things and a book called Cosmos, Cosmos 101. Cosmos 101 and some soup. Chat, we're pretty good off right now. What's next? Something seems to be troubling you, Captain. I've registered you keep staring outside the window into the endless void. Why did you lose something? I see, you remembering Earth. I admit, it was nice before the nuclear barbecue, that is. I can switch off for a second, Captain. Do you wish to have a moment to yourself? I want to hang out with my with my stupid cow, dude. I miss the planet. I I miss everything. I miss I miss barbecues. Oh. Okay. I hope we either win or die soon, because I'm actually deeply running out of time now, chat. Hang on. Is there anything I can craft? Soup. Let's make more soup. I could send Emmett out right away, and I'm probably going to tomorrow. Captain. You've been worried about something, Captain, but it seems those troubles are behind you. I'm not surprised by your choice to find comfort with the Astro Citizen issued Astrofact. It is guaranteed to resolve any and all of your emotional issues. I can't tell if it was the mumbling to or juggling of, of the artifact that helped, but I'm glad to see you're doing better. All right, Emmett. Uh, I'm sending you right on out again, Emmett. Go on. Bring some armor with you to protect you. And a soup, of course. We got plenty for you. Take a soup. Get on out there. Good news, Captain. My calculations are correct. The robot dog should be activate activated uh, very soon. Don't get too excited. It's not going to happen today. The charging process should be complete in the coming days. If you want to introduce any finishing touches, now is probably the time. The robot dog is looking a little bland, to be honest. Uh, I do believe any robot is fine without the bells and whistles, but perhaps I'm a little too rational and old-fashioned. You can introduce some upgrades if you feel really strongly about it. Just please don't add glitter. Only rogue automatons use that. Uh, I don't like glitter. It's coarse, it's rough and irritating, it gets everywhere. For once, I agree. Glitter- Glitter's the worst fucking thing ever created by mankind, chat. Can we talk about this for a second? Sand is fine. Alright? Compared to glitter. Glitter actually fucking sticks to shit and doesn't go away. It's a sin. That's right. This is- Whoever made glitter, I sincerely hope, while leaving the patent office, uh, was run down by a stampede of, like, wild buffalo. Like, run down, like, completely crushed to, like, paste. I'm sorry, that's just how it is.
Day 57. Whoa! Commies! Sure, it wasn't glitter, but you really tried to go all in on this poor robot. You rearranged some wires, screws, all the screws extra tight, and even tried to bounce the outside shell on hard objects to make the shape more aggressive, but to no avail. Are you trying to create a guard dog? You thought it would be so rad if the dog could shoot lasers from its eyes, so you experimented and switched some things around, hoping to achieve the desired result. Well, we'll find out if it succeeded or not. Why is there a commie on my ship? Captain! There are a couple spacemen having a roadside picnic outside. Wait a minute. They're wearing Soviet spacesuits and they're singing Kalinka. What are Soviets doing here? Are they the mysterious group that have been watching us? Oh no! It was a distraction. They're trying to break through the shuttle. One of them boarded the shuttle. Stand your ground, Captain. I'm gonna dance around him and roundhouse kick him in the face. I'm not losing the ship to you of all people, you fucking commie. This ain't how I die, chat! This is not how our journey ends! It ended like that. Well, that was fun. We lost! Forget it. That's how it ended. Yep. Alright. I surrender. The plan was good. Get rid of the intruder, have a can of soup, and wait till the whole thing blows over. Too bad you failed and got yourself captured along with the rest of your crew. Captain, this is Minsk X. You used to know me as Astro. I regret to inform you that we were relieved of your command. Oh, that you were relieved of your command. Comrade Cosmonauts are taking over this imperialist shuttle and will use it to found Cosmograd, a city of cosmonauts. Cosmonauts of the universe, unite! Okay. Well. I failed, Chet. Uh. Little dumb that that failure was literally a RNG flip uh, that no amount of good gear or preparation could have helped with. Uh, it was literally me getting coin flipped and rolling too low at the end. Which is a bummer. I feel like I could have actually won if uh, that hadn't happened, honestly. Ha! Ha again, ha! Well, chat? Alas, that's the end of my story. I have to go. I'm actually over time by about 25 minutes. So, um, yeah. This is a fun game. I like it. I probably won't ever play it again. I feel like I've seen enough. Uh, we're already getting some repeats of events and shit. I enjoy it. I don't hate it. I've had a lot of good runs. I never beat it, but hey, uh, I feel like I could have if it hadn't RNG'd me right at the end. I'll be hanging out with Kraken and the gang, I think, in a couple of hours doing Vermintide, but uh, no more right now. I am I am off. I'm off. I gotta do other stuff tonight. Uh, I'm gonna raid Brett today. He's playing Oblivion. Yeah? Let's raid, uh... Let's raid, let's raid our boy Brett. He's playing Oblivion today. You guys go hang out with him. Thank you so much for all the bits and donations and subscriptions. I appreciate it as always. Have a good night, guys. I should be back tomorrow at 4 to 5 p.m. EST. If I'm not, uh, it's because I hate you guys. And I've decided to skip a day. Well, no, it'll mean that I'm busy and I couldn't do it. So if that's the case, I'll be back the next day, yeah? Don't count on tomorrow. It's really just like, tomorrow's weird. All right, so if I'm there, I'm there. If not, I'm not. Sorry for the short stream. Busy life, you understand. I'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully, 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. EST. If not, tomorrow, the next day, same time. You guys know how it works by now. I don't feel like I need to tell you anymore. See you when I see you, all right? Love you guys. Bye-bye.